The following is a presentation of WGN Sports. Well, if you're looking for last-minute Cubs merchandise, there's plenty to be had outside Wrigley Field. And inside, a good-sized crowd is gathering for our final Saturday of baseball. It's game two of this three-game season-ending series between the Cubs and the Pittsburgh Pirates from sunny but cool Wrigley Field here in Chicago. And all the excitement comes your way next here on WGN Sports. And a pleasant good Saturday afternoon, everybody. Joe Carter, Chip Carey back at the ballpark. Joe, the Pirates won yesterday 3-2. to two. The Cubs' quest for a 90-win season will not come into play. But Sammy Sosa's assault on the record book continues. He hit number 62 yesterday. Well, Sammy has just impressed me so much this year. The things that he has done day in and day out and to consistently the last four years hit over 230 home runs. I mean, I applaud him because Sammy, he's a great ambassador of the game. And he is a great ball player having another great year here in Chicago. These games, some feel, are very difficult to play for the players who have nothing to play for except for individual numbers and personal pride. But Julian Tavares is getting the ball today. Cubs are trying to find out whether or not he's going to be a starter or a relief pitcher next year. This start might answer that question for Don Baylor. Well, one of the things that Julian did, he had been a reliever and now turned to the starter. He kind of went down a little bit where his arm got tired. So let's see if he can bounce back and come out here and throw a good game a day. But this is a, a chance for him to go out there and to show if he's made what he's made of, of and hopefully get him back to next year. Tony McKnight will be the starting pitcher for the Pirates. But before the ball game starts, first let's enjoy our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Illinois Lottery, where players have more fun. Pepsi, the joy of Pepsi. It's cool, windy day here in Chicago. Partly sunny skies. Our next to last game of the 2001 season. Nice sized crowd has gathered at the ballpark for game two between the Cubs and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh needs a sweep to avoid a 100 loss season. The Cubs need to win the final two games of the year to maximize their effort at 89 and 73 on the season. Julian Tavares is getting the ball for the 28th time as a starter today against Tony McKnight who was acquired from the Houston Astros in the big trade for Mike Williams at the Major League trading deadline. Sammy Sosa hit number 62 yesterday in a losing cause for the Cubs. Pittsburgh won game one of the series by a final score of three to two. So as the Cubs take the field let's check out Lloyd McClendon's Pittsburgh starting lineup this afternoon. Gary Matthews Junior leads off in center field followed by shortstop Jack Wilson. Brian Giles has had a fine year in left field. Aramis Ramirez, the cleanup man at third. Warren Morris hits fifth at second base. Kevin Young at first base, bat sixth. 
Rob Makoviak, a Chicago native, is in right field. Umberto Cota is the catcher. He hits eighth. And Tony McKnight will pitch and bat ninth. The Cubs' joy of Pepsi defense much improved this season and much improved in right field. Sammy's had one of his best defensive years for the Cubs. He's in right field, of course. Corey Patterson in center, Roosevelt Brown in left. The infield lineup, the Shields at third, Gutierrez at short, Chad Myers gets the start at second, Fred McGriff back in the lineup, Todd Hunley behind the plate, and Joe, a big start for Julian Tavares. He tries to win for the tenth time this season and maybe answer a few questions for Don Baylor. Will he be a starting pitcher? Will he be a relief pitcher? Will he even be a Cub in 2002? Well, all those questions should be answered or may be answered today, but Julian Tavares, you know he has the stuff with that good sinker, real good slider, so he has to be effective to keep the ball down, but it's all about how many innings he's pitched, and that's why Julian went to the bullpen, gave him some time off, because it takes a while to build that stamina up when you've been a reliever majority of your career. One final weekend in a Cub uniform for Kevin Tappany. Kevin was notified Monday that the Cubs would decline his option on his contract for next season. And there have been some whispers that maybe Kevin is close to calling it a career as a major league starting pitcher. Nothing has been confirmed. I'm sure Kevin's going to think that over, talk it over with his friends and family and come to a decision not shortly after the conclusion of this 2001 season. But if it is finished for Kevin in a Cub uniform, it certainly will be sad to see him go. You won't find a tougher competitor, a nicer guy, and a man that's perfected the art of pitching more so than Kevin Tampany has. And we wish him the best in whatever realm of work he decides to work toward next season. A ball outside. We're underway in game two between the Cubs and the Pirates. You know, Chip, talking about Tampany may be retiring, I wonder if when he went through the stretch where he lost all those games when he bought his ERA down a point, if he had won those games, I mean, he'd be on the verge of winning 20 wins this year, and would he same have the same aspirations of thinking about retiring? Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Kevin Tampity can still pitch, but I'm sure, Joe, you went through the same thing, too. Kevin has some young children, and there comes a point in time where you have as much financial security as you need. You've accomplished and proven everything there is to prove as a major league player as Matthews drives that one into center Patterson long run good play one out Kevin Tappany has nothing left to prove and your kids are only six or seven or eight years old once well you know what every player will know when it's that time hopefully every player will know as they take a look at Corey Patterson running down to Gary Matthews junior fly ball but when you're called home and all of a sudden your kids are doing things they don't get a chance to see you play as much because they're grown up now. You miss those times. And like you say, they are financially set. So you put things and we'll put things in perspective and realize you said the family needs to come first right now. Jack Wilson, a sinking line drive, caught and left by Roosevelt Brown, who's trying to make a late season impression. Two fly outs to open the game for the Pirates here in the first inning. Good play in left. You know, Chip, one thing you like when you have some young ball players out there. The last two games of the season don't mean too much as far as the stadiums are concerned, but they mean a lot by showing not only the brass, but also the fans what they can do. And Roosevelt Brown with the great play out there in left field, very remnants of Rondell White's season out there this year. Everybody says, hey, Roosevelt struggles defensively. We haven't seen much evidence of that this season, and we all know that guy can hit. So he might have a chance at... Uh, a big league job with the Cubs next year. One ball, one strike to Giles. Downstairs to Giles. Two balls and a strike. Giles with 37 home runs and 95 batted in. Three balls and a strike. I'm kind of surprised, Joe, that when the Pirates had the blueprints of PNC Park in their hands a couple of years before it opened, that they weren't able to try to stock up on left-handed power hitters. Giles, the really only true power threat they've got, the friendly porch in right field has benefited him greatly. He rolls out here in the first inning, however, and the Pirates fail to score in the first.
Here's a look at the Cubs joy of Pepsi lineup as we go to work in the bottom of the first inning. Delano to Shields will lead off, followed by Corey Patterson and then Sammy Sosa. Fred McGriff back in the lineup for the first time in a while. He'll be at first base. Roosevelt Brown's in left. Ricky Gutierrez at short. Todd Huntley's behind the plate. Chad Myers at second. Julian Tavares will pitch and bat ninth. A quick peek at the Pirate defense. Rob Bakoviak is in right for the Pittsburgh team, a former 53rd round pick by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And on the mound, a young right hander, Tony McKnight, of whom Joe a lot is expected. They really hope this guy can solidify that Pirates starting rotation of. A fiveson that was racked by injuries this season. Well, a former number one pick from the Houston Astros came over in the Mike Williams deal. Not an overpowering fastball. He gets to Lionel DeShields to ground out 4-3. Not an overpowering fastball with throw consistent in low to mid 90s. His best pitch has been his curveball, but injuries have really set him down his first three or four years in professional ball. If he can get past the injury bug, a lot of promise for this young man. Corey Patterson hit second. He's in center field. Corey, four homers and 14 driven in. Strike one to Patterson. When you have days like this, last two games of the season, you'll see a lot of first pitch swinging. Guys trying to hurry up and get things over with, but still trying to make an impression. Squib foul for strike two. Just about everything in baseball has been determined now. The Atlanta Braves have won another division title. Is that amazing or what? You talk about an unparalleled string of excellence for the Atlanta Braves. They've clinched the National League East. The Arizona Diamondbacks have won the National League West. Both Houston and the Cardinals are in the playoffs. All that needs to be determined is who wins that division. Cardinals have to win the final two games to beat Houston. If they finish tied by virtue of the head-to-head -head series matchup, Houston would be the division champion as they beat the Cardinals more in regular season play. All or nothing play at third base. Maya Ramos Ramirez and Patterson with an infield hit brings up Sammy Sosa. Well, Corey Patterson using his speed as our Ramos Ramirez. Only chance he had was to barehand this ball. And on a cold day like today, very tough to make that play. Corey Patterson with that patented three bounce base hit. But they all count. He'll take them. Yeah, em. you're right. They all count. Just ask this man at the plate, Sammy Sosa. 62 home runs for Sosa, 155 driven in. And you talk about a man that set a record with a flourish last night. Barry Bonds was amazing. Two more home runs for Bonds. He has set the mark at 72 home runs in a single season and two more games for the Giants to play. But unfortunately for Dusty Baker's team, all that effort for naught. The Giants are out of playoff competition. Well, they had a wild game. Not only with the home runs from Barry Bonds, but the game itself with the Dodgers. And you know the Dodgers take take great satisfaction in being able to knock the Giants out because of that long heated rivalry that they've had over the years. Infield shift on for Sosa. Three men on the left side of the infield. And that one popped out of play to even the count. It's a much different Sammy Sosa the last four seasons. The power has always been there. The RBI opportunities the last four years, not as much as the last nine or the previous nine seasons. But what's most impressive to me, Joe, is that first number, nearly 50 points higher with his batting average. Well, you talk about a guy who is who knows the strike zone and who has learned to make adjustment. And baseball is a game of adjustments. Some guys can make them, some guys can't. They don't change their swing. Sammy has done that, and he has done it in a tremendous way by cutting his swing down with two strikes, still hits a lot of home runs with two strikes, but he doesn't swing at that outside pitch like he used to. And when you say cutting down on your swing for a right-hand hitter, meaning he can take the ball out to right field. Exactly, and, and a lot of guys will not do that. When you try to pull the ball, what you end up doing, you pull off of the ball with your head because you're trying to pull the ball to left field. If you stay on the ball, drive it to right field, and that's why Sammy has a lot of home runs to right field. 
Two balls, one strike to Sosa. McKnight misses high and away. Three balls and a strike. That fan's ready to catch a Sosa souvenir. Cubs trying to jump in front here in the first at wind blown Wrigley Field. Now, Chip, after Barry broke the record, 71, which was, I mean, you give your props to Barry. He deserves everything he's gotten right now. A tremendous ball player. But the 72nd home run bounces back into the field of play. Runner goes, and it doesn't matter. It's ball four to Sosa, two on, one out. Now, if you're Marquise Grissom, do you throw the ball in or do you keep the ball? Well, did you see what he did? <laughs> he faked like he was going to flip the ball into the stands. He held on to it and then put it in his back pocket. But uh, Sean Dunstan, the former Cub before the season, said Barry Bonds was going to hit 71 home runs. And I don't know if you saw the post-game news yes. conference, but <laughs> Barry Bonds said, well, I made a stupid bet with Sean Dunstan, so he's got to <laughs> buy him a, a fancy sports car. It was a SL 500. Uh, that's the convertible Mercedes. So, uh, Sean, just give us all a ride in it. <laughs> ground ball by McGriff. Foul. Billy Williams, the Cup Hall of Famer, makes the play and foul ground over at first. One you know, strike to Fred McGriff. You know, one of the things that Barry said that was very, very interesting and very true, he said the hardest part wasn't 71 or 72 the hardest part was hitting 70 and with all the pressure of the Mark McGuire home run race and everything that was the toughest and once he got to that point I mean it was like a load off his of his shoulders and he started really to enjoy what he has been doing but just a phenomenal unbelievable year for a guy to have that many walks and that many home runs. He's not missing anything. How about the sporting public, Joe? You played with Barry Bonds, who at his best is very much an enigmatic personality. Some days he's as gracious and as nice as you can possibly imagine an athlete or a human being being. Other times he comes across as the antithesis of those ways of describing him. Do you think, though, that the American sporting public has started to embrace Barry Bonds, that Bonds started to let his guard down a little bit and was able to help his public image in breaking a record that many thought would have been unattainable just a couple of years ago? Well, I, I think he has helped his image, but one thing you have to realize about Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds is a true professional. Ripped. Just foul. Missed a double by inches. He plays the game as hard as anybody there is that plays the game, and his job description is to be the best baseball player he could possibly be, and that's what he takes the most serious. So he's not worried about what you say about him are how the reactions are against him about what he does. His job is to be the, the best ball player he is, and that's what he is focused on right now. Now, going through this race, you see his wife, his daughter, Nikolai, the bad boy, and so you see a different side of Barry Bonds, and that's the side that a lot of people don't see, but has always been there, and it's just not coming out. Two balls, two strikes to McGriff. That caught the corner strike three called two outs two on for Roosevelt Brown. I think too, Joe it's not out of the realm of reality too that with what happened in our nation September 11th that there wasn't the same kind of outpouring of excitement about it. It wasn't the diversion as McGuire and Sosa were in 1998 and also the record being broken just three years previously to Barry Bonds I don't think helped the public embrace it as the big deal that it really is. Well for such a long time with the Roger Maris 61 number being up there but they said probably would never be broken and Mark McGuire just shattered that record 37 years later and now just three years I mean McGuire said I'm still playing the game and I lose the record so that is an accomplishment and a feat within itself. High and away to Brown, two balls, no strikes. So now the question becomes for Bonds, how many can he hit in the final two games of the season, and who's next on the list? I mean, Bonds said Sammy Sosa might be the next likeliest guy to hit 72 or more. And we understand that Bonds is not in the starting lineup for the Giants today in their next to last matchup with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, he's picked a great warrior in Sammy Sosa. Going to pass the baton, too. But Sammy, I mean, I'll take three years at 60. 
in one year at 50. It's amazing. Three balls, one strike from McKnight to Brown. Wetter weather and more in Chicago. 50 degrees, winds out of the northwest at 16 miles per hour. Swing, belted, deep tart right field, Roosevelt Brown out onto Sheffield Avenue. Puts the Cubs in front by three. For Roosevelt Brown is making a name for himself. Home run number three on the eyes, 16, 17, and 18 as he unloads on Tony McKnight. Tony Sheffield Avenue, and this ball was no doubt about it. Three home runs, 18 driven in for the man that won the Pacific Coast League batting title this year.
kind of think about keeping Johnson fresh for the playoffs more so than a meaningless finale season. You know what, and records are made to be broken as Barry Bonds has shown that right now. But with Rennie Johnson, you have to think more about playoff time. And, and if he throws tomorrow, then what you're looking at is a pitcher will throw two days before his next start. So if he goes out there and throws a couple of innings, that's fine, but don't go for the record. Roosevelt Brown hits a three-run homer in the first inning. Tony McKnight had a long frame in the Cubs lead 3-0. Command. On this season premiere Dylan. of Andromeda, it's an enemy they hoped never to face. It would destroy everything and everyone. Too many. That's impossible. Too powerful. Too late. We're not back here in three hours. To turn back. Blow it to hell. Don't miss the stunning season premiere. Andromeda. Sunday at 8 Eastern on WGN. Welcome to the show, MLB 2002. Rated E for everyone. MLB 2002. Find the seams. It's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm. Did I lock my keys in the car? Mm -hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. Cubs by three after one. Aramis Ramirez is set to go in the second inning for Pittsburgh. This young man has had a wonderful season in pirate black and gold. And it's great to see that man back. The coach, coach Ron Santo back for the final weekend of the season. Surgery went well. Yeah, Ronnie, you're on TV. There you go. There's that big smile from Coach. He always has this look. What are they saying about? Yeah, me? I, I know. He's uh, yeah. He always wants because he knows he knows me. He knows you, Chip, especially you. Yeah, that's just <laughs> that, that's the good part. Ronnie has an entourage with him that would make Elvis envious. <laughs> Two nurses, an assistant. I mean, all those folks are there to help Ron Sandal. <laughs> and uh, Andy Mazur in the middle of your screen. One of the fine on air talents from WGN Radio, Pat Hughes, of course, longtime voice of the Cubs. I mean, Ronnie, it's incredible. He's He's got that medical device wrapped around his belt. He's got the crutches. But uh, I know Ronnie's very happy that all his recent surgeries have gone very well. We're excited for him and hope that uh, his medical problems are a thing of the past. And uh, we look forward to. Great offseason for Coach Ron Santo. Down on strikes goes Ramirez. Julian Tavares has retired the first four men he's faced on a frigid day at Wrigley Field. Wow, you talk about great movement here. Julian Tavares let out a little grunt there as he turned this ball inside, ran it in on the hands of Ramos Ramirez, and it just cuts him off right smack dab in the middle. Wow, great movement. Here's Warren Morris. A couple of years ago, this man was touted by some as a Rookie of the Year candidate. But it's been a, a tough sophomore and junior season. Back to back for the fine Pirate infielder. He's hitting just 200 this year, a couple of home runs and 11 batted in. You know, Chip, the middle part of this game can really be your downfall. If you're not able to handle the expectations and 
a lot of guys come in. They're supposed to be the, the next Willie Mays, the next, next Hank Aaron, uh, the what's, next rookie of the year. What's going on into that blanket? Ground ball to the right side. Chad Myers will flip the first. Arnie, what's going on under there? Where's our get our blanket cam? Two outs. This is a family show, though. Well, there's probably a whole family under there. Two outs, base is empty for Kevin Young. That might be the Wrigley Field blanket record. A strike to Young. Hi, everybody happy? They've got their Cub hats, their Cub jerseys, their down comforters, and their Homer Simpson Pez. I mean, there's nothing more American than a Pez Go. on a cold day. You're absolutely right. And Kevin Young almost getting nailed by Jillian Tavares fastball, and you don't want that to happen. Ground ball up the middle. Ricky to his left. 360 spin behind the bag. Young doesn't run well. And Julian Tavares is perfect through two. Chad Myers, Tavares, and DeShields coming up for the Cubs, leading the Pirates by three. Inside an ancient alien artifact, Earth's final stand is about to begin. A new enemy arises. We have unleashed the final conflict. And a hero emerges. You're not like the other humans. Yeah, I get that one. In the season premiere. This is our world, human. Not yours. Of Earth Final Conflict. Sunday at 9 Eastern on WGN. Gentlemen, if you keep dogging it, we're gonna run all night. Now let's go. Come on, let's go, let's move, move, move! That's better. That's looking. What if stopping was as hard for you? Just run it off, run it off! Come on, show me some hustle. As it is for your car. That's okay. Treat your car right with Ray Bestest Quiet Stop Brakes, new at Pet Boys. Keep your wheels clean and save up to $40 on these ultra quiet, low dusting brakes. Oh, it's gonna be a long season. All you need to know is where to go. Pet Boys. Nice collection, Terry. Nice reminder, too, Howie. Of? Of the Sprint store at Radio Shack. You're two minutes slow. Actually, I'm thousands of minutes ahead. Get 3,000 Sprint PCS minutes a month only at Radio Shack for just $29.99 a month for six months, plus save up to $75 in mail-in rebates. But these clocks are still off. Well, somebody should reset them. While somebody else? Makes a few phone calls. Only at the Sprint store at Radio Shack. When it's action you want, you want America's Superstation. WGN Superstation. Now that is a bullseye you gotta love. Look at that target. Let's see if Chad Myers can hit one a long way here. Chad hitting 154 on the season. Chad had a solid season at AAA Iowa. He's 25 years old, bidding for a major league roster spot. He's going to go down to winter ball and play down in Mexico until around Christmas time and then see where he stands. But with the Cubs' decisions to be made up the middle, certainly a guy like Myers has to earn a little bit of consideration for the time being. Well, he will, and also with the, the prognosis of Eric Young becoming a free agent, What's going to happen at second base? Will they bring him back? You talk about Bobby Hill down the minor leagues, but if you look at the turnaround last year to this year, 12 guys that were not here last year are here this year, so will they make that many changes next year? And that's something, it's amazing. <laughs> this guy is the, the Don Baylor of modern day infielders. I mean, every time <laughs> Myers is up there, he gets hit. He's had 13 at bats. That's the fourth time he's been hit by a pitch. Well, the, the thing is, he steps in with that left leg, and, and maybe that bullseye we just saw, maybe he has one on his leg. But take the, the ball attracting magnet out of his leg, and <laughs> maybe he won't get hit. But you know what? Any way he can get on base, Chad Myers will take it. 
He has real good speed too as Tavares shows bunt. And that's an element of the Cubs attack I think that Don would like to see improved. The Cubs as a team 66 stolen bases. And 30 of those 66 from Eric Young alone. So not a whole lot of balance offensively for this Cub team. Most of the attack Sammy Sosa. Most of the speed part of the attack from Eric Young. And Myers has shown in his minor league days and with this Cubs team the ability to steal a, steal a base or two. So we'll see if Don lets him show his stuff here in the second inning. Well, you know, Chip, if, if Rondell White is healthy all year, Michael Tucker can steal a few bases. Corey Patterson, if he had played the whole year, you would have saw more stolen bases. But with the small ballparks right now and the year Sammy Sosa's having, why run yourself into outs when you got a chance to hit him out of the ballpark? And that's what Don Baylor has, has taken hold of and said, let's go out there, not steal the base, we'll try to hit the home run. Perfect bunt by Tavares. Sacrifice works, it's 1-3 on the putout. And also to do that right there, sacrifice. Cubs have by far the most sacrifice bunts. That's 117 of them on the year. And if you had to venture a guess, what would be the leading stolen base total, not by an individual, but by a team in the National League? If you had to guess, what number would it be? Well, with the Cubs, that's 66. You probably say somewhere about 118. A little more than that. A Philadelphia Philly team that stole 153. I mean, you think back to when Vince Coleman, Willie McGee, 115, 100. They, by themselves. Exactly. So the game certainly has changed dramatically to the old Earl Weaver style of baseball. Sit back and club three run home runs. And you're right, with the pitching diluted, with the strike zone still at times inconsistent, with the ballparks being what they are, teams are reluctant to run themselves into outs when they can hit potentially multi run home runs. And Chip, one of the, the other things I also see a lot of. With the injuries, especially to your speedsters, you're talking about a lot of hamstring pulls, a lot of groin injuries that normally did not happen when you had the Ricky Hendersons out there still in 118 bases. So now the guys who are out there still in the bases, all of a sudden they're going down. So now they say, you know what? It doesn't pay me to steal bases. I can either hit the ball in the ballpark, hit the ball in the gap, and save my legs for a 162-game schedule. The hat catches the corner, one ball, two strikes, but I think it'll be fun to, to see whether teams in the next couple of years go back to that hit and run style, that reckless abandon, almost gas house gang style of baseball. And will people start to call those teams throwback teams to the <laughs> era when the parks were much bigger, the ball wasn't as lively, and teams really did manufacture runs without benefit of a base hit? Well, Chip, it's almost like this. What goes around comes around. And Bell bottoms were out back in the 70s. They've come back around. Different fads have come back. And pretty soon the stolen base will come back. It just won't happen for about four, five, six years because with these small ballparks, you know, if I'm a manager, you don't risk getting thrown out as compared to having a chance to take it out of the ballpark. Swing and a miss by the Shields, and he's tagged out. And that's out number two. See me in that coming back that's kind of like white shoes? White shoes, white pants. They're all coming back. Just checking. Third strikeout for McKnight. Myers holds it second, and here's Corey Patterson. This ball nicely knocked it down by Alberto Cota, young pirate catcher. Well, this is one of the pitch that Tony McKnight they feel is, is his best pitch, the breaking ball. And when you can throw the breaking ball, breaking ball with that much snap and get it over the plate, or even throw it in the dirt with two strikes. I mean, you will have a lot of hitters chasing that ball. There you see another great curveball to Corey Patterson. So that has been his out pitch throughout his career, but they won't develop the movement on the fastball. Let me ask you this as a veteran hitter, when you saw a young pitcher like a Tony McKnight, what was the tip off to you that he was starting to get it? In other words, was making the transformation from a 4A pitcher to a guy that could be successful at the major league level, besides stuff. Well, the one thing you look at it is his composure on the mound. How does he handle, handle himself in certain situations? And one thing about a pitcher, a pitcher will always take his best pitch. And every at bat, if the pitcher has a great curveball, he will show his great curveball to you at least two or three times, depending on, depending on how far you go in the batting 
uh, when you're hitting that particular at bat. So when I saw a pitcher get the confidence, that composure, act like he belongs out there, and then able to hit his spots, you knew he started to believe in himself. Anderson lines it out of play foul. Two balls, two strikes. Cardinals coming up in the bottom of the eighth inning, leading Houston eight to six at Bush Stadium. That has been a wild ball game by the banks of the Mississippi. Cardinals win today, puts them a game up with a game to play. And Chip, if the Giants had won last night, they would have been in a great situation because no matter what, they would have been one game behind with one game left. They would have gained on somebody, yes. but no such luck. The Dodgers spoiled the party last night. Nothing happening for the Cubs in the second, but Don Baylor's troops lead the Pirates by three. Perfect timing. An old enemy returns. I am destined to be ruler of the world. A new spirit warrior appears. Your destiny awaits you. Darling. And secrets are revealed. It's about dark mysteries and deep magic. That will change the world. You can still have what you want. Fight for it. Mark Singer. I have much to show you. The season premiere. Beastmaster. Sunday at 12 Eastern on WGN. Find the seams. It's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm. Did I lock my keys in the car? Mm hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. The long jump. The dash. Life is like a sport. And your feet take the impact hard. But new Stride Guard insoles absorb 50% more heel impact than these Dr. Shoals. Take more impact in stride. New Stride Guard insoles. you expect Bob Doe follow Mark Martin and the Viagra racing team this season get to your doctor for a checkup and find out if a free sample of Viagra is right for you and for more information right now race over to Viagra.com hard to believe friends but the 17th annuals Cubs convention is right around the corner January 18th 19th and 20th at the beautiful Chicago Hilton and Towers downtown there to get on the phone and reserve your room now. They're going quickly. 312 922 4400 is the number at the Hilton. If you need more information, you can call this lovely young lady and speak to her personally. Annie Fitzgerald, the manager of special events and player relations with the Chicago Cubs. Very nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Jim. Now, last time we talked about the Cubs convention, you were petrified yes. to come on tell are you yes. a little bit more relaxed I'm definitely You're much more relaxed a veteran yeah it's the name change <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely first of all how's how's yeah. how's how's the wedding gone oh how's the wedding Fitzy was doing? great it was great you guys doing okay oh wonderful <laughs> Fitzy you're definitely an overachiever <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but it's great to see it. What's new with the convention? I know everybody wants to hear about that, Annie. Yes, definitely. Um, the pass is actually going to go on sale November 1st this year, a little bit later. Um, and they're going to go on sale at 10 a.m. And you can just call 773-404-CUBS or stop by the Wrigley Field box office. Now, this is an amazing event for those who have been to a convention and see all the work that you and your staff put in. For those of us who are lucky enough to be invited and be a part of it, it is a lot of fun. It sells out every single year, and I imagine you're expecting the same kind of turnout after the great cup season we've seen this year. Oh, absolutely. Actually, the rooms are almost gone. Really? Yes. We just got a report yesterday that there, there are very few left, so you really need to get on that if you want to stay at the Hilton. I know a lot of folks wonder who's coming, who's going. A lot of new faces will be with the Cubs by convention time, and I imagine a lot of the new players will be there as well. Joe, you're going to make your uh, debut. I will make my debut there, any just for you and the Cubs. All right. Good play by Chad Myers. McCobiak rolls out. 
One up, one down in the Pittsburgh half of the third inning. What what kinds of things can the fans expect to see once they get to the Cubs convention? Well, it starts like you can't even imagine. It starts with a Pete Toma video. And uh, that starts the convention off on Friday the 18th. We're going to watch a video of Pete Toma yes. doing what? <laughs> Pete. <laughs> it is, um, that starts everything off right at the opening ceremonies on Friday night. And from there, Friday night's filled with tons of activities. Bingo, Sports Central goes live. Saturday, there's tons of sessions, vendors everywhere, autograph, photographs. There's uh, usually 50 players from present and right. past there. Are we doing Survivor again? Because that was a lot of fun watching of Tim Stoddard outlast. Oh, that was great. He beat Coomer. He beat Coomer in the Oreo stacking contest. Yep. He would have won if it was an Oreo eating contest, too. I promise <laughs> right. you that. Timmy. What about uh, Ricky Gutierrez uh, hula hoop? The hula hoop, Rich. Yeah. So, ladies, you won't want to miss that if Ricky is back at the convention next year. But it is a lot of fun, and I know you want to thank a lot of the members of your staff for all their hard work in making all these Cubs conventions so much fun and something to look forward to. Absolutely. It is. Everybody works so hard to make it perfect, including my father. My dad works. He's, it's been his, uh, it'll be his fifth convention working, too. Right. Now, we've got to ask you. We have heard it from a pretty good source. <laughs> First, the 2-2 pitch. And that takes care of Coda. Two up, two down. Tavares perfect through two innings and two-thirds. That you are the real brains behind the marketing <laughs> department. Now, I don't know what Little Bird told me that, but would you care to comment on whether or not that is the case? Um, yes, that is the case. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, all right. The I truth love finally it. comes I love The it. truth, it's time. That's it's it. time. There's no doubt. Well, I know John McDonough would probably be a wise man to agree. But uh, I know, Definitely. Andy, you guys have done such a great job with the convention, and I know that that you guys really are the unsung heroes for making this Wrigley Field experience such a remarkable thing for all of us who have the great honor of coming to work here every day and for the 2.7 million fans who've come to the ballpark as well. Just a great job, great promotions, and we look forward to many, many more years of fun at the ballpark with you and everybody else. Thank you, Chip. Annie, you're the best. She is. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Annie Fitzgerald, a That's newlywed, right. still smiling, hard to believe. <laughs> but best wishes to you and Fitzy, and we'll see you at the convention. Sounds great. She's the best, Annie Fitzgerald of the Cubs Marketing Department. And you heard it straight from her mouth. That's if right. you're interested in getting some rooms at the Hilton, you better get going quickly. They are almost sold out for Cubs Convention Weekend. 773-404 Cubs is the direct line to Annie Fitzgerald. She will answer each question individually or one of her little elves will do that. You can also find out more about the Cubs convention on the website, www.cubs.com. And a whole lot of money will be raised for Cubs care. Great giveaways, great events, and a whole lot of fun, and a lot of smiles will be brought to a lot of people's faces. And we thank Annie for her hard work. Julian Tavares, three perfect innings, and the Cubs enjoy a 3-0 lead. Tonight, White Sox meet Minnesota to continue their close race in the Central. Mags and the good guys are at the Metrodome for the last series of the season. Sox at Twins, tonight at 7 Eastern on WGN. 15 million people in America have type 2 diabetes, and my own grandmother lost her battle. If you have type 2 diabetes, it's more important than ever to watch what you eat and exercise regularly. And if that's not enough, ask your doctor about adding Avandia to your daily routine. Avandia is different from some diabetes medications. It helps your body use the natural insulin it's already making to help lower your blood sugar. With the addition of Avandia, a lot of people have been able to lower their blood sugar. Avandia in combination with insulin may increase the risk of serious heart problems. Because of this, talk to your doctor before using Avandia and insulin together. Avandia may cause fluid retention or swelling, which could lead to or worsen heart failure. Avandia is not for everyone. If you have severe heart failure or active liver disease, Avandia is not recommended. Some people may experience weight gain with Avandia. Premenopausal women may be at increased risk of pregnancy. To check for serious liver problems, blood tests should be conducted before and during Avandia therapy. Diet, exercise, and ask your doctor about adding Avandia. You can be stronger than diabetes. This is WGN Superstation. Well, it's great to see Ron Santo back. You bet. He should be a Hall of Famer, and hopefully Cooperstown will call him in a couple of years. 
Great start by Julian Tavares today. He's perfect through three, and the Cubs lead. 3 0 on a picture perfect Saturday afternoon. Final weekend for baseball in Chicago. Well, Julian has great movement throughout the day. He's faced nine, set down nine, three punch outs. The main thing is when he doesn't have that, he's not striking everybody out. He's got that sinker ball working. That's the one thing about Julian that you like. You like the movement that he has. Will he be able to sustain that for a complete year? Has remained to be seen, but he's working towards building that stamina up, and that's what the Cubs like about him. Again, our thanks to Annie Fitzgerald for having some fun with us in the top of that third inning. She forgot to mention a happy birthday to Jeff Dunn, her brother-in-law watching us in Cincinnati today. So, Jeff, many happy returns. And the fans in the bleachers hoping for a happy return from Sosa. He's done it 62 times this season. He walked and scored in the Cubs first. And McKnight's got a real good breaking ball. He's shown that consistently today. Well, that has been his best pitch throughout his career. Trying to get him to get some late movement on the fastball. That's what Roosevelt Brown hit out of the ballpark. Don't hang the curveball up there. One thing, when you have an out pitch as your curveball and you show it to a hitter, the first time through the lineup and then he comes back and the first time up the second time up the first pitch you see it the more you get used to that out pitch the better chance you have of hitting that pitch. Sosa down two strikes they're going away. And ball taken low one ball two strikes looking like the Cardinals are going to have a one game lead heading into tomorrow's play they just got two more in the eighth inning. They now lead. 10 6 over Houston. And the shift continues to be seen from this Pirate infield defense. High and tight evens the count. Sosa needs two home runs for 450 in his career. 241 home runs in the last four years for Sosa. That's more than 60 per season. So if he keeps that torrid pace up, and by 2006, he'll be knocking on the door at 700, if not driving through that door. If my Georgia math works, two balls, two strikes. Well, you'll probably be about 40, 50 off if you're talking about Georgia math. But one thing about Sammy, he's not going to be too far off as he has put together a tremendous year and a tremendous career, and he has a lot of games left. But you just admire the way he goes about the game two games that don't really mean anything but Sammy's out here playing driven in the air to right field playable for McCobiak you can see it glasses gleaming <laughs> can't find it it's in the seats about to <laughs> not in the seats it is a fair ball it skips it's past him the they're gonna wave run. it Sosa's gonna try inside the park home yes. run. that ball was in the seats I thought McCobiak did too Everybody misjudged it. It's an inside the park home run. I don't believe it. Home run number 63 of the inside the park variety. And Makobiak, he was coming towards the bullpen, and the ball was over his head. It's because of that high sky and the sun. He never saw it. Sammy didn't know it. And when it hit, he was off and running. 63 home runs for Sosa and inside the park home run down the right field line. Makoviak misjudged it so badly I thought it was going in the seats. I mean the wind was pushing it into that corner and where the outfield wall juts out we lost sight of the ball and McGriff that that's going to be an outside the park home run back to back. Wow. Well, right now, McCoy, Rob McCoviak doesn't know whether he's coming or going with the high, with the wind swirling and gushing out towards right field. When Sammy took that little swing, it really fooled him with the power that Sammy has. And he came turning in as if the ball was going to be a little bitty blooper. And when it went past him, that's a pop up. On the warning track. It was a pop up by Sosa. He wasn't sure. He thought it was going to hit off that wall and be a foul ball. 
Uh, once he saw McCovey Agnes judge it, once he saw Brian Runge signal fair ball, it was no contest. Brown, it's a line drive into center field. Matthews makes that play. Well, back to back home runs in a different variety. Prime dog with this 12th home run of the season. Sammy home run number 63. First inside the park home run this year. Go back to Crime Dog, no doubt about this. The changeup right down the middle. This is the problem that Tony McKnight has. Another high fly ball. This one left center field. Matthews broke back. Now charging. Can't get it. A drop safely. Two for two is Ricky Gutierrez. Cubs five, Pirates nothing here in the third. The wind is playing all kinds of tricks. Well, the first response from the outfielders, when the ball is hit, is to take a, te a step or two back. And Gary Matthews goes back on the ball, then has to realize the ball is not hit very hard. Comes diving in, just does miss it. But there's an old adage. When you hit the ball in the air like that, anything can happen here at Wrigley. You see one bloop in, you see one bloop over, and you see Sammy run, Sammy run. Wow, isn't that amazing? Here's Hundley, and he takes the ball low. Most exciting play in sports, some say, is that inside the park home run. Yeah, but that can be very tiresome. Hundley hits that one in the air. Matthews going back, still going back. He runs to a spot and has room for out number two. You remember how many inside the park home runs you were able to pick up? It, it was two or three. In fact, one of my three homer games, the second home run was the inside the park home run. So I did it the easy way and the hard way. But those are the times in spring training when you're out there, when you're running, and it's that last run around the bases before you get to go in and shout and you say, okay, from home, home to home, and it's at the park home run. And you never know when that chance may come. But when you get through with it, you are some kind of huffing and puffing. So uh, inside the park homer and outside the park homer. Sosa with 63, McGriff with 12. Got a letter from a fan saying, why don't you count Fred McGriff's home runs from Tampa Bay? We've got a major league team, too. Well, very simply, when a player trades leagues, his American League stats don't carry over. So McGriff, with 31 and 101 combined on the year, has hit 12 and knocked in 41 with the Cubs. But Sosa, and inside the park home run, helps the Cubs to a big lead of 5-0 at the end of three. WGN Superstation. Trust me. All the comedy, all the action, all the drama. America's Superstation. It was a shark. Bringing you the movies you'll always remember. I can still feel you. And the moments you'll never forget. Let's keep going. WGN Superstation. Yippee ki -yay. Your Superstation. The movies you love. Holy cow. The movies you want. This is just the beginning. WGN Superstation. Beer is only as good as the ingredients used to brew it. That's why Budweiser uses only the finest all-natural ingredients, hand-selected to deliver a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you won't find in any other beer at any price. This Bud's for you. you expect Bob Doe follow Mark Martin and the Viagra racing team this season get to your doctor for a checkup and find out if a free sample of Viagra is right for you and for more information right now race over to Viagra.com
Welcome to the show, MLB 2002. Rated E for everyone. Well, the Cubs have scored five runs in the first three innings. And so far, Julian Tavares has been perfect. He'll face the top of the order in Gary Matthews Jr. Before he does that, let's pause for station identification. This is WGN Superstation. Chip and Joe from Frosty Wrigley Field. 5 0 Cubs. McGriff, Sosa, and Brown have each hit home runs. Sammy's an inside the park home run down the right field line. And even the members of the working press were fooled by that pitch that Sosa hit. Everybody was fooled as badly as Rob Makoviak. Well, when Makoviak came in from the, the viewpoint that we have up here in the booth, as I was looking, I'm like, the ball is not where he's going. And once it was over his head, he just did not see it with the wind blowing out and the elements, the wind and the, <laughs> the sun. That blur you see is the baseball. <laughs> there right it is there. right there. I mean, he thought it was in the seats. So did the fans in the corner. So did I. And, and Chip, there is not a worse feeling in baseball when you run to a point and you're looking up and you have no idea where the ball is and everybody is looking at you. And you know, in, in your mind at that moment, I don't know where the ball is at. It's a lonely feeling. That's a tough feeling. Two balls, two strikes to Gary Matthews Jr., who has flied out for the Pirates today. Pittsburgh needs to sweep the series to avoid a triple digit loss season. Last time that happened was 1985 when the Pirates went 57 and 104. They're sitting on 99 right now and 5 nothing lead in the top of the fourth does not look very good. Tavares just does miss the inside fastball. So that spoils the bid for the perfect game. But Pittsburgh still looking for their first base hit. Let's see if they try to run a bit with Matthews here with Jack Wilson in the box. He lined to left. Roosevelt Brown made a diving catch. Scary story out of Kansas City. Royals pitcher Mike McDougal has a fractured skull after a teammate's bat struck him while he was standing in the dugout. Well, the thing that happened there, Chip, Carlos Beltran, when he swung and he let go of the bat, the pitcher away, he swung and lost control of the bat like Ricky Gutierrez will do occasionally. And McDougal was in the dugout on the top step, but he was not looking at Beltran. A lot of the guys kind of moved away from him. But Dougal never saw the bat. And when he looked up, Matthews is in big trouble. The throw back to McGriff, and he is out. Pirates played hit and run. Wilson did all he could. Matthews is retired for out number one. Well, the hit and run, and when you hit and run, you got to put the ball in play. And Jack Wilson couldn't make contact. And he was caught in no man's land. And the Cubs execute the run down perfectly. 2 6 3 if you're scoring at home. Two strikes to Wilson with one out now. Weak ground ball to second. Sunday hop for Myers on a Saturday afternoon. Pirates still looking for their first base hit. Two down. Joe Torrey and George Steinbrenner are talking contract again. Joe Torre has led the Yankees to four World Series titles in the last five years. Is in the final season of his contract. Cannot imagine that George Steinbrenner would let Joe Torre walk away. Another ground ball, another chance for Myers. Easy play, and he makes it nicely. Julian Tavares has faced the minimum through four, and the Pirates are still hitless. Might be on the verge of a special game at Wrigley. Stick with us, leading 5-0. Hey Kelly, it's Steve. Couldn't get the concert tickets. You don't mind hanging backstage with the band, do you? See you tonight. Hey Kelly, it's Gary. Looking forward to tonight. How do you like Italian? Hey Kelly, it's Jack. I got those movie tickets. I can't wait to see you this evening. Hey Kelly, it's Mike. You, me, lobsters tonight. Looking forward to it.
Telling. I don't trust this man at all. Vincent has cheated on me not once, but twice. Oh, this season, real life-changing television. You get help now, you start paying me back my money, or I'm out of here. Hosted by Michael Baston. Talk for a walk. Weekdays at 11 Eastern on WGN Superstation. We are a company of Americans. 32,000 men and women who are proud of our country and company. 32,000 men and women who pledge allegiance to our flag. 32,000 men and women with a mission to keep America flying. Nothing can keep our country or Southwest Airlines from moving ahead. I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. Life is like a sport. The impact of each step impacts more than just your feet. But new Stride Guard insoles absorb 50% more heel impact than these Dr. Shoals. Take more impact in stride. New Stride Guard insoles. Cubs by five, and Julian Tavares stands in against left-hander Damaso Marte. The second pirate pitcher of the afternoon. And he looks at a ball outside, does Tavares, who sacrificed his first time up. One ball, one strike. It's a final in St. Louis. Cardinals beat the Astros. 10 to 6. So the season finale is going to mean an awful lot. And the scheduled starters tomorrow Shane Reynolds for Houston, Daryl Kyle for the Cardinals. If Houston wins that game and forces a tie in the Central, they are the division champions. By virtue of more head to head wins in regular season play than the Cardinals. If St. Louis wins, of course, then Houston will be the wild card. Tavares out on strikes, one away in the home half of the fourth inning. Well, Damasol Marte with a great breaking ball here to Julian Tavares. All Julian could do is just take a look. Joe, you're going to stick around tomorrow and run the Chicago Marathon before coming out to the game? Yeah, I'm going to be along with Pat Williams. I'm going to go ahead and run with him. He's going to run for the both of us. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, if y'all are running, I want to dress warm. It's going to be cold tomorrow yes, morning. Yes, indeedy. But uh, we want to wish uh, AP writer Nancy Armour good luck. Pat Williams as well, one of the original front office executives with the Chicago Bulls in their inaugural seasons. He's in town with his lovely wife, Ruth, to run the Chicago Marathon. Roberto Rios, one of our fine WGN tape operators, will be participating. So good luck. Get your pasta tonight. Use it up tomorrow. You ever run the marathon? I've always wanted to. I really would like to do it. I've run 15 miles before. That's about as much as I can do. But 26.2 is otherworldly. If, if I've got to run, I got to run with the basketball in my hand. <laughs> One, two, pitch. Two to Shields. You can do that if you want. Yeah, but that's a long way to go before you score. <laughs> that's true. But good luck to all the participants. Have a safe and fun run tomorrow. Got to figure it's going to be a little tough to break a sweat early because it's going to be chilly when they fire the starter's pistol for the annual Chicago Marathon here downtown. Three, or make it two balls, two strikes to Delano to Shields. What's this guy's future with the Cubs? He's a young man. He's 31, 32 years old with a lot of stolen base opportunities. And that one over the bag foul. Oh, man. Hopping the line with C.B. Buckner. Gene Glenn with a bit of an argument thought for a minute that one went over the bag fair. Well, usually an umpire will position himself right on the line. If he looks to his right, it's a foul ball. If he looks to his left, it's a fair ball. And I'll tell you what, that looks that looks like a pretty fair ball to me. I think it was a fair ball. Yeah, I think he was worried about getting out of the way and not getting hit. How about John Shulock? 
Ricky Henderson with 2,998 hits and he checks swings one down the first base line and Shulock jumps to one side and calls it a, a foul ball. In essence, it was a fair ball. It's, it's not a time to mess up when a guy's going for 3,000. Well, Ricky better hurry. He's got two games left to get well, to 3,000. He's already passed Ty Cobb for the run scored record. But Ricky also said that, quoted Ricky, that he will not play the last in the season because that is Tony Gwynn's day. Huh. So if that's the case, Ricky got one day. Wonder if Tony Gwynn says, Ricky, I want you to play, whether he'll play or not. But yeah, it's going to be a sad night, a bittersweet night, I guess, tonight in Baltimore. Final game in the Hall of Fame career of Cal Ripken Jr. as the Orioles host the Boston Red Sox at Camden Yards. You talk about a tough ticket to get. I'll bet that's right up there amongst them in Baltimore baseball history tonight. Well, the way things have have happened, Cal getting a chance to end his career right where he started. I mean, the man has had a phenomenal career, and regardless of what you're dreaming about, he will be in the Hall of Fame. Three balls and a strike. Cal hasn't been hitting the ball particularly well. And last time I checked, he was in a one for 32 slump, and you know he's thinking about saying goodbye tonight. He's in there on the 240, 242, 241 mark. And when he announced his retirement, he went on the tear as he was going into every city that really that last game. He was hitting home run after home run. And Cal has always had a flair for the dramatic in big games. Well, I know that someone, when Lou Gehrig reached that Ironman record first, someone probably said in invariably that that record will never be broken. <laughs> But barring a huge sea change in the way sports and this sport in particular is played, I don't see Cal Ripken Jr.'s record ever being broken, and I don't see Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak ever being broken. Well, Chip, we can sit back and say that, but records are always made to be broken. Well, we know that, but those are two of the toughest in the history of this great game. But they said the same thing about Roger Maris and Mark McGuire, and that has changed in the last three years. Nothing doing for the Cubs in the fourth, leading by five. Hard test for two. Yeah! Big, big time basket of the fourth, lead by three. Inside of three minutes to go. Jimmy Moon broke up with Ashley. And? And this could finally be it. We could get back together. Only Rod wants me to go with him instead. Pretty exciting, huh? What was it? A new enemy arises in the season premiere. This is our world, not yours. Earth Final Conflict, Sunday at 9 Eastern on WGN. Now, I know you're engaged, but in our house, it's our rules. Good night. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Daddy. Why settle for an ordinary beer when you can have the smooth, satisfying taste of Michelob Light? Screw over. Ah. <clears throat> Here. Such a nice boy. <laughs> so what'll it be? Beer or Michelob Light? <laughs> Nice collection, Terry. Nice reminder, too, Howie. Of? Of the Sprint store at Radio Shack. You're two minutes slow. Actually, I'm thousands of minutes ahead. Get 3,000 Sprint PCS minutes a month only at Radio Shack for just $29.99 a month for six months, plus save up to $75 in mail-in rebates. But these clocks are still off. Well, somebody should reset them. While somebody else? Makes a few phone calls. Only at the Sprint store at Radio Shack. I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. 5-0 is our score. Before the Pirates come up in the fifth, let's step aside quickly and let you know what's coming up later on WGN.
It's the film that made Sly Stallone's Rambo a movie icon and changed action movies forever. First Blood, tonight at 11.30 Eastern on WGN Superstation. Aramis Ramirez leads things off. A strikeout victim, his first time up. Whenever you have a season like the Pirates have had, and Lord knows the Cub fans can relate with the last two years with what they're going through, you do try to look for silver linings. And the play of Brian Giles and the play of this young man really gives them a nice one-two punch in the middle of their batting order. Ramirez, a 30-homer, 100-RBI third baseman at a very tender age for the Pirates. Something they have to be absolutely giddy about for the next couple of years. Ground ball sharply hit. Myers stays with it. Pittsburgh still without a hit through four innings and a third today. But Julian Tavares ha that has that sinking fastball working to perfection. And that stand in the bullpen gave him a lot of days of rest. Seven ground balls and three strikeouts on the afternoon and Chad Myers already with four assists as he's got four ground balls way outside of Warren Morris who grounded out to Chad in the second inning Tavares has faced the minimum today uncharted territory for the Cubs right hander a career high innings pitch with 158 and Chad's going to need a new piece of leather at the end of this ball game he's picked up the last four assists two outs well they'll call it the, the day of October 6th the day of the four to three is Chad Myers and he has a, a thing working with Julian Tavares to say hey ground ball to me we'll get out of this real quickly well, here's the guy I fear the most in the pirate lineup Kevin Young's hitting only 230 this year but he has absolutely punished the Cubs with a 303 batting average. And three home runs. Big strike zone, big swing, big bell bottom uniform pants. Well, it's just been a terrible year for Lloyd McClendon. The rookie manager comes into a situation. New ballpark, a lot of expectations and a lot of high hopes for the Pittsburgh Pirates, their organization, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden. They take away the, the bullets to his gun. He had no bullets as everybody came up limp, came up hurt, lost his starting staff, and Derek Bell did not pan out to what they thought he would be. Well, I'll have him back next year. He's got another year left on his contract. The Pirates have so many things they have to correct. They need an everyday leadoff guy. They've got to settle on a right fielder, middle infield. Most importantly, though, they got to find some way to keep their pitching healthy. You can't expect Francisco Cordova to come back. He's got the bad elbow. Chris Benson's not going to be back. And Pittsburgh, even with that new ballpark, doesn't have huge numbers of dollars to go out and attract number one or number two starters. Well, the one thing that happened, and it was a it was a shame, really, as Tavares drops down on Kevin Young, and he's. No, no through five. Go ahead, Malin. Slobber. Are you high, Clary? <laughs> with a little humor and a great deal of strength. I would rather have 30 minutes of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special. A unique circle of small town women bond together. Oh, God, I want to go. Academy Award winners Sally Field, Julia Roberts, Shirley MacLaine, and Olympia Dukakis. Steel Magnolias. October 20th on WGN Superstation. you expect Bob Doe follow Mark Martin and the Viagra racing team this season get to your doctor for a checkup and find out if a free sample of Viagra is right for you and for more information right now race over to Viagra.com you had a car you could stop by Colorado and pick me up you'd want that a girl he couldn't resist an adventure he couldn't believe who's the pretty girl 
and a game. We had a little incident here last night. He can't escape. Steve Zahn. Guys, yeah, coming after us. Paul Walker. He knew you were in here. He's watching us. Lee Sobieski. Is he ready for an adventure or what? Joyride. Rated R. Now playing. This copyright telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Here comes Sammy Sosa in the fifth inning. Pirates again with the infield shift. And Rob McCoviak and right. I want to play a little bit closer to the right field line this time. Last time up, Sosa and inside the park home run. Amazing. He's got 63 blasts on the year, and he had a home run cut. Lost in all of the hoopla of Sosa's year. 63 homers, 156 batted in. Sosa has scored 144 runs in 159 games. Chip, you're talking about just for one phenomenal season for anybody in baseball to put the numbers up. And you go back to the 98 season with McGuire with 70 home runs and Sosa with 66. And it seemed like he was overshadowed. And now with Barry Bonds breaking the home run mark with 72 in the year he is having. It's going to be a very interesting vote as far as MVP is concerned. And I don't know. I, I you talk about a three-man race. I think with Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa and Albert Pujols and Louis Gonzalez and Louis Gonzalez. And I, I think right now that Barry Bonds may have the advantage simply because of what he just accomplished, despite what the Astros did to him past three games by not not pitching to him. Well you think back to 1998 when Sosa and McGuire brought baseball back from the bitter taste of 1994. McGuire of course won the home run race. He was the man that got to 70 but he wasn't doing it in the midst of a play of a playoff push. Bonds right. did until the final week. However Bonds didn't lead the Giants to a playoff spot. Only two men that are going to be able to do that in the National League MVP race this year yes, Louis Gonzalez, Gonzalez and Albert Pujols. So there are some who will say, and I tend to agree with them, that if you don't finish in first, just how valuable is that player? Hot shot, pace hit. Not a knock against Sosa or anybody else. Don't get me wrong. As Sammy rams that ball through the shift and is on base for the third time today, but when you think about Obviously, what Sosa has meant for this Cub team, the bottom line is winning baseball games. To me, that's the essence of making a player most valuable. And, Chip, this will be argued for centuries and centuries, centuries for a very long time. And that's one of the reasons why the Players Association came out with their really own awards where they had not most valuable player, but most outstanding player. Player of the, I, I player of the year. I agree. And There's that really sells everything because everyone will say, well, is this guy the most valuable player for his team or for the league? Is it based on what he did for his team, what he did overall season? And that's what the Players Association has done. And I think it goes back to the year when Daryl Strawberry came in second in the voting. I believe it was 89 when Kirk Gibson won the all, won the MVP, where he had, what, I think 80 RBIs. So. Yeah, it just depends on what your definition of most exactly. valuable is. Is there any doubt that without Sammy Sosa, the Cubs are deep in the second division in the oh, Central man. Division? Absolutely. They could have been the third division. Yeah, I, so if your determination is what that player may, means to his team, well, then there's no question that when you look at the numbers of Sammy Sosa, offensively, he carried nearly... 31, 30, maybe 39 percent of this club's offensive total all by himself. No debating that. If, however, you talk about a player doing the most to get his team to the postseason, well, that's a completely different definition. And I think, obviously, in the case of Bonds and Sosa, deserving of very, of very different consideration. McGriff, a base hit to right field against the left hander. Two men on, nobody out in this fifth inning. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Get a vote. Who's getting your vote? Can I give one third of a vote? <laughs> you, can, 
Well, if, ever, if ever there were a year where you could conceivably see the vote split, like really Stargell and Keith Hernandez at 79, this could be the year that that happens because when you look at the numbers of Bonds, of Sosa, of Pujols, and Gonzalez, the only exception being maybe Pujols, three numbers of Gonzalez, Sosa, and Bonds are all so very close that you really are going to have trouble distinguishing between them. However, 72 home runs, a 500 on base percentage, more walks in a single season than any man in the history of the game. Slugging percentage, which is the best in all of baseball. And, and I, I think if I had to choose, I think my first vote would go to Barry Bonds and what he has accomplished breaking the major league mark for walks in a season. Slugging percentage, on base percentage, uh, on base percentage of 514. So every two times he comes to the plate, he's on base one of those times. It has just been a phenomenal year. And it came down to the last week of the season, not only for the home run chase, but for them to be eliminated from the playoff race. But I, I'd, I'd like three votes, though. <laughs> Everybody would. I think Bonds is going to win it. Round ball, hot hit towards short. Second base one. First base is in time. Sosa to third. With two men out. Michael Tucker, by the way, came in a pinch run for Fred McGriff. And uh, he's forced at second base. Two men out. Sammy's at third for the Cubs shortstop, Ricky Gutierrez. So would, would Barry Bonds be your vote? I go back and forth on it. I really do every single I day. <laughs> You know, watching Sosa play every day yes. and knowing how large a contribution he made, and knowing that Bonds did what he did, you look at the numbers of Bonds, they're just staggering. I think I'd have to vote him first. I think because the Cardinals are going to make the playoffs, I'd probably put Albert Pujols a very close second, considering he played four different positions and is doing all of this as a rookie at 21 years of age. I think I'd put Sammy third and I'd probably put Luis Gonzalez fourth simply because I think he's had a, a better supporting cast in Arizona. Although there are fans southwest that would probably disagree with that. But I think when you look at what Bonds has done, what Pujols has done, I mean, it's just four great players who had outstanding years and it's going to be one of the most contested MVP races we've seen it quite some time right. and and guys are going to sit down and look at all the list of all the nominees and like who do I pick I mean it is just that close because the bar has been raised to a, a very extreme high level I mean it's driving everybody nuts one ball two strikes Way high, two and two. You notice Gary Matthews Jr. is not exactly creeping closer to that squirrel. He's coming to get him. The <laughs> Cubs have got their killer squirrel out there. Uh, I guess they're getting back at Gary for hitting that game winning home run, a 7 6 ball game against the Cubs. Rocket BNC Park. Swing and a miss. <laughs> And that takes care of the Cubs. All right. Cubs are winning the game, and they scared Gary Matthews out of his pirate uniform. Julian Tavares, a no-no through five. Back with more in a minute. <laughs> Sunday at 7 Eastern on WGN. Beer is like a natural food product. The fresher it is, the better it tastes. That's why Budweiser has 12 local breweries right here in the United States. So you know our beer will always be fresh. This bug's for you. Fifteen million.
million people in America have type 2 diabetes. And my own grandmother lost her battle. If you have type 2 diabetes, it's more important than ever to watch what you eat and exercise regularly. And if that's not enough, ask your doctor about adding Avandia to your daily routine. Avandia is different from some diabetes medications. It helps your body use the natural insulin it's already making to help lower your blood sugar. With the addition of Avandia, a lot of people have been able to lower their blood sugar. Avandia in combination with insulin may increase the risk of serious heart problems. Because of this, talk to your doctor before using Avandia and insulin together. Avandia may cause fluid retention or swelling, which could lead to or worsen heart failure. Avandia is not for everyone. If you have severe heart failure or active liver disease, Avandia is not recommended. Some people may experience weight gain with Avandia. Premenopausal women may be at increased risk of pregnancy. To check for serious liver problems, blood tests should be conducted before and during Avandia therapy. Diet, exercise, and ask your doctor about adding Avandia. You can be stronger than diabetes. One more game on the schedule tomorrow. We'll have it for you here on WGN, the season finale with these Pittsburgh Pirates. Big swing and a miss by Rob McCoviak. Julian Tavares chasing history at Wrigley Field. Michael Tucker stays in the game. He'll play first base. He's looked pretty good over there. Downstairs. To the Pittsburgh right fielder, a former 53rd round pick by the Pirates. Born and raised in suburban Chicago, his dad a construction worker. This is a young man that, like his dad, has had to work very hard for every single thing he has earned in Major League Baseball. And he said that it really is a dream of a lifetime to come to Wrigley Field and get a chance to wear a Major League uniform and play in front of friends and family. So yeah. we applaud him for that. You definitely do, and everybody who plays a game of baseball needs to just sit back and think about how good they really have it. And if you do that, then you won't take this game for granted. Julian Tavares, five strikeouts, six in a row. He's set down today. But Julian Tavares has, Tavares has just been phenomenal and still has the great movement. That sinking fastball down the way. Koviak, all they can do is just reach for it. Here's Umberto Cota. Breaking ball, he's had a sharp one this afternoon. Cota, originally a farmhand of the Atlanta Braves, tore up his shoulder a couple of years ago. And the Pirates have signed him up. He's just a young 22 year old player whom they feel could be a catcher of the future if they decide to move Jason Kendall from behind the plate. And the one thing you worry about Jason Kendall Craig Biggio made the move from behind the plate to second base and Kendall playing a little of the outfield now and trying to save wear and tear on that body and they know how very instrumental Jason Kendall is to this party ball club and feel that behind the plate is going to take away four or five years out of his career. Well they've said he's not going to play second base anytime soon as Tavares has his sixth strikeout and really Joe when you think of the contract he signed a big dollar contract what makes Kendall the special player he is is that he does have speed behind the plate doesn't have a whole lot of power and especially the way PNC Park is configured how can you play him in left or in right field when he doesn't hit more than 10 to 12 home runs a year. Well, but one of the things about having Jason Kendall, he's a marquee name in this Pittsburgh Pirate lineup, along with Brian Giles. And when you have a new ballpark, you've got to show the, show the fans that you're willing to spend some of that new money that is coming in. And what better way than by an uh, all star in Jason Kendall? And that's what the Pirates did. They want to keep the fan base, keep the interest. So they signed a Jason Kendall. Now, find a place to play him at that's going to be beneficial for the ball club. That's going to be a, another story. Adam Heisdu, a longtime minor leaguer, getting a shot with the Pirates late. Pinch hitting for Damaso Marte. Tavares has struck out six, including three Pirates in a row. Heisdu hitting just 208 on the year. Inside corner, one and two. Five nothing. Cubs have the lead in the Pittsburgh sixth. Julian Tavares, if he's auditioning for something next year, he's getting the starting role. That one got the home plate umpire. 
Mike Riley. Well, apparently he's all right. San Diego over Colorado eight to four. We'll have to find out if Ricky Henderson has done any playing today. Or San Diego needed just a couple of hits for three thousand. We'll update that for you. Phillies won game one of a doubleheader in Cincinnati two to one. They're tied one one after three at Synergy Field. Another team that had a great year is that Philly ball club. They too lost ninety seven games. But they're out Ooh. of the money. Ouch. Eyes do got hit on a two two pitch. No way he could get out of the way of that ball. And his right hand took some punishment. Well, Jillian Tavares has been inside on a few hitters, but you have to be not intimidated. You have to come inside to be effective to get guys out of the way, especially big league hitters. And right here, Heisdu can't get out of the way of this slot, this sinking fastball that ran up and in on the hands. And the day like today, that cold chill out there. Makes the hand sting a little bit. So to the stretch goes Tavares against Gary Matthews Jr. By the way, Ricky Henderson does have a hit in that San Diego game. So he's one away from 3,000. The hit was a double. He's also scored a run. Matthews in the box. He's flat out walked. Only two Pirate base runners on the day. And you know that it's been a while for Julian since he's worked off the stretch. That might have an effect. That could favor the pirate hitter here, so we shall see. High and away, ball two. Boy, now just a lot of things the last week of the season here in baseball. Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken Jr. retiring. Also, guys that don't hear too much about, Eric Davis. This will be his last year. Ricky Henderson with the all time career runs leader breaks Ty Cobb's mark. Even Mark McGuire of the Cardinals is hinting that this might be it. He said he's fried and he's embarrassed by the way he's swinging the bat, hitting less than 190 for the Cardinals. Well, Mark had the, the bad knee all throughout spring training and missed half the season. And when everybody had a half a season under their belt, he was just going through spring training. But it's that competitive edge that a ball player has. And no one can say when you have to retire, when you should retire. But in your heart, you will know when that time comes. And when you start to think about more about retirement than you are about baseball, you know it's time to go ahead and get out while you still have some of your health with you. Little ground ball toward third. The shields in, up, across, bad throw. Tucker can't get the glove down. That's got to be a throwing error. It is an error. Boy, the Cubs are giving the Pirates every opportunity in the world to break up this no hit bid. The line of the Shields on a cool day made a terrible throw. Highs due to second. Matthews at first for Jack Wilson. Still no Pittsburgh hits. And well, two on, two out. It's the first ball that was hit. The first ball that was hit to the line of the Shields. Julian Tavares couldn't bear to look to see the results. But when you've been sitting there on a cold day, your hands not loose, the ball's a little slippery, and it just came out high. Tavares says, I'll take it myself. Bare hand throw. <laughs> and on five hops, oh. they say Tucker came off the bag. All hands are safe for Pittsburgh. Don Baylor's going to come out and argue. Brian Rungi had an eagle eye look at the play at first. A five hop throw from Tavares. Michael Tucker can't believe it. Bases are loaded for Pittsburgh, and we'll see how this will be scored by Bob Rosenberg. Well, Julian Tavares made a great pickup, and this is not an easy play. He bare hands it, and he has to get rid of it quickly and throws a one, two, three. Well, he was on the well, bag, he, but it looked like Tucker, when he tried to sell it, deked the umpire. Well, it almost like he came off and then got back on. Looked like he was on the bag right there, and then he moved his foot. And looked like he still got it back in time. So here's where the official score has a real tough decision. Did Tucker make the error by not holding the bag on a sure out, or do you reward Wilson for a dribbler? It was a tough play. Bases loaded, two outs.
And they give the air to Julian Tavares for the bad throw. And the crowd celebrates as Bob Rosenberg makes the call. But here's a real tough customer, Brian Giles. Bases loaded, two outs for Pittsburgh. A hit batsman and two straight fielding errors by the Cubs. Ground ball, he ought to be out of it. Myers has it. And the inning mercifully comes to an end. How about that? Pirates strand three. They're still without a hit after six. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of Pepsi. This track is missing something. <sighs> That's the flavor. Gentlemen, if you keep dogging it, we're gonna run all night. Now let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's move, move, move. That's better. That's looking. What if stopping was as hard for you? Just run it off, run it off. Come on, show me some hustle. As it is for your car. That's okay. Treat your car right with Raybest is Quiet Stop Brakes, new at Pet Boys. Keep your wheels clean and save up to $40 on these ultra quiet, low dusting brakes. Oh, it's gonna be a long season. All you need to know is where to go. Pet Boys. <laughs> Welcome to the show, MLB 2002. Rated E for everyone. MLB 2002. When it's action you want, you want America's Superstation. WGN Superstation. That line score says all that needs to be said. Todd Hundley will lead off the Cubs' sixth inning. A real shaky defensive inning by the Cubs in the sixth inning. But Tavares got another ground ball, and Pittsburgh, even with five outs, could not tally their first base hit. And here's another look at that play a moment ago. Bob Rosenberg wanted to find out upon whose shoulders that error should be. It's a perfect throw by Tavares, albeit one on the ground. It was right at Michael Tucker. So I think he's going to change that call from an error on Tavares to an error on Tucker, his first career error as a major league first baseman so give Rosie a lot of credit for trying to get the call correct and now Rich Loisel is on for the Pirates Loisel has had a whole lot of arm troubles of late for the Pirates this is a man that was their closer a couple of years ago they're trying to get him back into form and give them another option in their bullpen next season three balls and a strike in fact Loisel had a save against the Cubs on that road trip which brought us to Pittsburgh a week and a half or so ago. And you know after this year Lloyd McClendon is just going to sit back and he can't wait to this year to be over with. All the things he had gotten into his very first year of professional managing on the big league level. It's all about staying healthy and there's nothing the manager can do when the guys go down. Well, I will say this for Lloyd McClendon if a team takes on the personality of its manager I think this pirate team has they've played very hard under some real awful circumstances when you lose your entire starting rotation it'd be very easy to cash it in and when people look at their record they will say well the pirates didn't care I don't think anything could be farther from the truth this team has played hard for Lloyd McClendon for Dave Clark for that whole staff and that is I think another one of those silver linings that fans of baseball in Pittsburgh have to applaud this pirate team. Well, and, and there are a lot of a lot of managers out there that players don't particularly like and will not play hard for when it comes down to the end of the season or when the season is, is virtually lost since the first month of the season. But yeah, you're absolutely right, Chip. 
There's guys they respect Lloyd McClendon. He's not a guy that's going to rip a guy in the paper. He's going to go to him and talk to him, but do it in a calm, a calm voice. We've only seen him get mad one time, and he has actually tried to get away with the base. Well, he became the all-time <laughs> Pirate managerial stolen base leader. But, you know, 162 ball games, you're bound to have one little slip up there. So I think we can give him that. Well, as any manager will tell you, you're only as good as the players that you have. And right now with the banged up pitching staff that Pittsburgh has, the injury to Jason Kendall. As that ball pops away, no advance by Hundley. Pirates right now just aren't very good, but they do have a beautiful ballpark. They are a great baseball organization in a terrific baseball city. A town that's enjoying a wonderful renaissance and a new century. Lots of things to look forward to in Pittsburgh, but it's not going to be an easy task for them. Not in this Central Division with the way the Astros, Cardinals, Cubs, Reds, and Brewers are putting together their organizations. This Central Division might be the elite division in baseball next year and for the next several to come. High hopper by Myers to second. Good play over there by Warren Morris. And a good at bat by Myers sends Hundley to second with one man out. Well, Warren Morris come in. This was, this was a very tough play because the high chopper. Not too many times you can lose a ground ball in the sun, but this could have been one of those plays. Morris comes in and no, he has to hurry with Chad Myers, and this is probably a victory for Chad Myers because one. He didn't get hit this time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> hit the ball before it hits you. Yeah, he leads two to one in that category <laughs> today. Here's Tavares. Julian is sacrificed and struck out today. Loisel back to work misses inside. Dodgers lead the Giants three to nothing at Pac Bell Park. Barry Bonds was not in the starting lineup for San Francisco. Kid me, I'd, I'd play at least two more games. Go ahead, you, you may as well add to it because I'll bet he's exhausted. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Lost a very close personal friend of his. Went to the funeral in between big ball games while the Giants were down in Texas. But with 72 home runs, is baseball's all-time single-season home run leader. It has cemented Barry Bonds' place in the pantheon of greats in Major League history. And a couple of questions. One, how long will that record last? But two, will Barry Bonds take the next crack at 72 in a giant uniform? Well, that was the thing that if you listen to the uh, celebration afterwards, Sean Dunstan, <laughs> not one who's always shy for words, just came out and said, hey, San Francisco, let's go. What are you going to do? You're going to sign the man. Let's go. We need him here. Son said he's coming back, so he feels if he comes back, then Barry's got to come back. He's got to come back to get that <laughs> new car. Two balls, yeah, two strikes. Exactly. Full count to Tavares. Big group from Oquaka, Illinois. Enjoying the game today. The Watson family wants to send greetings to all their friends watching in Sandpoint, Idaho today. Happy birthday to Johnny Cruz and Ed Rebos from Kim Rivera, our Chiron operator at the ballpark today. The Cantwells from Hobart, Indiana, celebrating their wedding anniversary today. Wagner Holmes from Valparaiso, Indiana, is here as well. Also saw the dandy little glove man, Mickey Morandini, was at the ballpark earlier today. Now, how's his wife doing? I hope fine. <laughs> she's obviously got serious eyesight problems. I hope she's <laughs> hanging around with Mickey. Out pops Spin Williams as Loisel has walked Hundley and Cup pitcher Julian Tavares here in the sixth inning. Hope our producer Pete Toma's dad, Peter Toma, doing well after knee replacement surgery back in suburban Philadelphia today. Stephen Fleming celebrating a birthday today from Kenosha, Wisconsin. A gentleman named Frank wants to invite Joe to his wedding. Doesn't say a date. <laughs> Probably I'll, fishing I'll, for I'll, a gift. I'll be there. <laughs> Paul Davis, one of our fine ushers and a member of the press box staff. And his lovely wife Rita celebrating their 55th 
wedding anniversary. Best wishes to the Davises. Five nothing. Here's the Shields downstairs. One ball, no strikes. Happy 49th wedding anniversary, belatedly, to Pat and Ed Langto. Wonderful couple of big Cub fans. Big Cub fan, Mrs. Russell Reed from downtown Chicago. Enjoys our telecast and a nice note with a panda bear sticker on the back of the envelope for the kids. Appreciate her kind words. It's been a fun year. A lot of great, great Cub fans have had a lot of things to be proud of in this 2001 season. No, the Cubs didn't make the playoffs. And ultimately, that is the goal. Get there and win the big prize. But one thing you have to keep in mind, the Cubs are not the Yankees, they're not the Indians, they're not the Mariners, they're not the Braves, not yet. And the goal now for the Cubs is to have some sustained success, build an organization that has a very strong foundation and make winning a thing of great regularity and not the cyclical thing it's been for the last 30 years or more here in Chicago. Well, you're right, Chip. You don't want to have that yo-yo effect where you go up, down, up, down every other year. You want to add on a little bit each and every year and keep going, have that incline going up. The the Shields time. ground ball off the glove of Ramirez into short right field. Hundley will be waved around. Jack Wilson has no play. The Shields goes the other way. That'll be a single and an RBI. That scores Hundley. It's a six to nothing game. With Delino going down the third base line. And Ramirez off his glove, turned the backhanded, and Jack Wilson, he goes over, slides down to get in a better throwing position. May have had a chance at Todd Hundley, but he was looking really at second base to see if Julian Tavares was going to go from second to third. Hundley comes across with the run. It's a six nothing lead for the Cubs. Here's Corey Patterson and he takes inside Rich Loisel's problems continue here in the sixth inning. Want to send along congratulations to the fine public address voice of the Cubs Paul Friedman and his wife Deanne proud new parents of a baby girl Kate Amelia Friedman. So congratulations Paul and Deanne can't wait to see your wonderful new arrival. Ground ball, broken bat. Loisel to second one. The relay to first won't be made. And on the transfer, DeShields takes out Jack Wilson at shortstop. Good hard baseball slide. Keeps the inning alive for Sosa with men at the corners. Well, Loisel breaks the bat of Corey Patterson, and it hits him in the right, along the right foot there. It didn't bother him too much, and makes a good throw to Jack Wilson. And Wilson trying to be quick. Takes it out, can't get it out. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. You'd better get out of the way of DeShields real quick. He couldn't. And now the Pirates again will come out and make sure that Loisel is all right. Just quick run with quick. I think so. Last time I checked. Can you think of a word that rhymes with you? You can tell it's the end of the year, folks. Perfect throw to second. And even though the Cubs, again, don't have a whole lot to play for right now, good hard slide by the Shields, and you see Wilson <laughs> losing the handle at second base. And Jack let was being quick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, Finn Scully. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Uh, there. It's always tough to come up with those rhyming words at the uh, right time. Well, I, I did go to Georgia. <laughs> I fully admit that. <laughs> two on, two outs. Loisel is all right, but he doesn't look too thrilled about facing the man in the batter's box. Sammy Sosa, who's got a perfect offensive day going. He's walked, he's homered. And inside the park home run. 
He's single. He scored twice and driven in one. Sosa needs two RBIs to equal his career high of 158. Tavares stands at third. He's had to run the bases a long time. Keep in mind, he has a no hit bid through six working for the Cubs. Quick. Okay. Gloves are off, pal. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. We've hit five o'clock. Feels like midnight. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Big Cub fan Sharon Rudzinski watching us from Bloomington, Illinois. Very upset that I was congratulating Mark Grace and the success he's had with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, I'm happy for Gracie, a good man who's had a great career, and he's got a chance to win a World Series championship with Arizona. They are the champions of the West, Sharon. What's not to be happy about that? A lot of fans were hoping that Gracie would be able to finish his career with the Cubs. Fact of the matter is, he had a chance. He turned down some long term deals with Chicago, wanted to go year by year, and frankly felt that what the Cubs offered him wasn't enough to allow him to stay. Well, he took less money over a longer period of time to go to Arizona than he would have gotten staying with Chicago. But it's worked out well for him in the end. 2 1. Ooh. 2 and 2, boy. He was going for the downs there. Yeah, Sammy says, I don't want to. No more of those inside the park home runs. Let's do it the more conventional way as Rizal with the breaking ball here. And Sammy is not getting cheated. And this is what he'd do. He'd do it with two strikes. Although he still has the power to take out any part of the ballpark, he will kind of swing down just a little bit. I do mean just a little bit. But he'll always be quick. I don't think I'm going to live that down, am I? 2 2 pitch outside. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. You know he's going to see a pretty good pitch here. Michael Tucker is waiting on deck. Strike three right down the middle. Loisel comes back and strikes out Sosa. So we go to the seventh inning. Cubs have a comfortable lead. Pirates still are without a hit. Code red. Officers down in command. On the season premiere Dylan. of Andromeda. It's an enemy they hoped never to face. It would destroy everything and everyone. Too many. That's impossible. Too powerful. Too late. We're not back here in three hours. To turn back. Blow it to hell. Don't miss the stunning season premiere. Andromeda. Sunday at 8 Eastern on WGN. We salute the American spirit. We pledge our allegiance to the flag. We will stand with our fellow airlines. We vow to continue. We will keep America flying. We will rise. The long jump. The dash. Life is like a sport, and your feet take the impact hard. But new Stride Guard insoles absorb 50% more heel impact than these Dr. Shoals. Take more impact in stride. New Stride Guard insoles. I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger, and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. Gentlemen, if you keep dogging it, we're gonna run all night. Now let's go. Come on, let's go, let's move, move, move! That's better. That's looking. What if stopping was as hard for you? Just run it off, run it off. Come on, show me some hustle. As it is for your car. That's okay. Treat your car right with Raybestos Quiet Stop Brakes, new at Pet Boys. Keep your wheels clean and save up to $40 on these ultra quiet low dusting brakes. Oh, it's gonna be a long season. All you need to know is where to go. Pet Boys. We go to the seventh inning. Julian Tavares 
into the seventh. Hey, the killer squirrel is out there again. Turns tail and heads back to the Ivy. I don't blame you. Here's Ramirez. He's over two. And that smarts. Strike one to the Pirates RBI leader, Aramis Ramirez. Julian Tavares with six strikeouts, nine ground ball outs, and six innings of work. There have been just four Pirate base runners. And Gary Matthews walk. And Adam Hisdu hit by pitch. Then Matthews and Jack Wilson reached on fielding errors and throwing errors by the Cubs in the sixth. You know, Chip, after the first two hitters, Gary Matthews flied out to center field and Jack Wilson fly to left field. Julian Tavares has not allowed another ball in the air. And what he is doing, he is keeping that sinker, throwing it not just down the middle of the plate and let it run in, he is throwing the inside on the inside corner and let it run in further and the Pirates are swinging that pitch and really falling off their own bodies and kind of beating them all beating their own selves up a little bit. One ball two strikes. Great day to pitch wind blowing in off the lake. Cold temperatures and Tavares a lot of movement. Out on that mound one two bases clear. Ooh. Another hit batsman. <laughs> well he's been pitching inside. Whole afternoon, the second guy he has hit, uh, Ramos Ramirez. He's gonna, he's gonna take his time to think about this one. Is this was he was hit very solidly. Tavares, you see him put a little extra right, right below the belt line there. And well, if you're gonna hit a major league player, yeah. might as well hit him in the wallet. That's the most protected place on the uniform. And I don't think Ramirez can continue. Well, the first pitch he swung and he fouled it off his leg and it took him a while to get back in the batter's box. He says, look, you know what, guys? I think I've had enough of this beating myself up right now. So Lloyd McClendon is out. And the question for the Pirates, who is going to come on and take Ramirez's place? What hurts Pittsburgh in this situation is, should Tavares take this no-hit bid into the ninth inning, Losing Ramirez makes Lloyd McClendon use another one of his bench players here and may take away the opportunity for a big bat later in the ballgame. And Mendy Lopez, I believe, will be the man that pinch runs for Ramirez. So scratch Lopez off the extra man list, put him in here in the seventh. And if this continues, and Tavares can get him out over the minimum in the last three innings. Pirates lose the services of Lopez with the bat. Here's Morris. He's grounded out to second twice. Outside corner strike. Scott Chasen begins to loosen up in the Cub bullpen. And you've got a no hitter going. Do you dare take him out? But he's thrown a lot of pitches. And you'd hate to see him lose it. Hey. Nothing wrong with a combined no no either. I've seen a couple of those before. It's still just as exciting. And it'd be a nice way for the Cubs to cap this season, a season that's seen this pitching staff come out of nowhere to be one of the elite staffs in the National League. And that's what you look at. You look at the progress made from year to year. And last year, 65 wins, 97 losses. Already at 87 wins, a chance to go up to 88 wins. A complete turnaround not only on the field but also in their minds mentally and physically. Runner goes fouled away two balls two strikes to Warren Morris Tavares has hit two men Cubs have committed two errors Julian has struck out six walked one today. That accounts for all of Pittsburgh's offense Pirates this year have been Blanked 11 times. This is a chance to be number 12. Aim comfortably in grasp of the Cubs right now. Ground ball in the hole at short. Ricky goes to second. They got the force play. One out. 
That had a chance to be an infield hit, but Ricky ranging to his right made a good play to force Lopez at second. Well, had it been nobody on base, would have been a tough play to get Wayne Morris at first base. But with the hits Bassman from Ramirez and Lopez running from him, Ricky is able to take the short route and go to second base. Keep the no hitter intact. A strike to Kevin Young. Young has grounded out. Ricky made a fine play on a ball. Young hit in the second. Kevin also was struck out looking in the fifth. Strike two. I love the fact that he's coming right after these guys. That's nice to see. Well, when you have the elements on your side, you don't pitch away from the elements. You use the elements to your liking. And because it is kind of a chilly day here at Wrigley, you want to keep the ball in on the hands of the hitters. If you break some bats, make that bat sting a little bit, they'll be a little bit more reluctant to swing the bat. Down on strikes he goes. Seven for Tavares. Two outs. And here's Rob McCobiak. If you just take a look and look and look where Julian Tavares is throwing the ball, this ball is inside. He's starting the ball in the inside corner. It's going further in. And Kevin Young can't come up with anything. Markoviak 0 for 2. Who says there's nothing to play for in the final two games of the year? Round of over 35,000 on hand at the ballpark today. One ball, no strikes. It's 2 0. Oh. Cubs go to 2.7. 4 4 million fans. Just a wonderfully attended year by Cubs fans everywhere. We appreciate it. 2 0. Oh. Swing and a miss. Two balls and a strike. And keep in mind, friends, only 176 days till opening day 2002. And we'll be right here. Ready to go. Ready or not, the pitch. The days do go by quick, Joe. When the season concludes, three balls and a strike. Makobiak with a young catcher waiting on deck. Is in command for the Buckos. Ball four. Two are on, two are out. Here's Umberto Cota, who has struck out twice. But Julian Tavares may be tired just a little bit. He's already thrown 102 pitches. A lot of those have come in the last two innings. Rick Kranitz, the Cubs interim pitching coach. Looking on as Tavares will go as long and as hard as he can. Two on, two out for Coda. And Julian again, that ball biting it on the hands, jumps ahead with strike one. You know, it's just been amazing where he has left the ball. The Pirate hitters have continually swung at the ball three to four to five inches inside, and all they've done to make contact is hit the ball off of their own bodies. As a pitcher, you want to stay in there because all they can do is miss the ball or hit it foul. Kona went around. He's had a couple of hacks like that. Two strikes to the Pirate catcher. Craig Wilson's on deck. Don't want to see him at all today if the Cubs can avoid it. He has been Darth Vader in baseball spikes off that Pittsburgh bench. Two strikes, two on. Here it comes. Struck him out. He's got a no hit bid through seven. Eight strikeouts for Tavares. And we'll see if Wayne Mesmer can play. Can you top this in the seventh inning stretch? Fans on your feet, good and loud, good and proud. Let's hear God bless America. All right, Gary.
beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my. the seams. It's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm. Did I lock my keys in the car? Mm -hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. Life is like a sport. The impact of each step impacts more than just your feet. But new Stride Guard insoles absorb 50% more heel impact than these Dr. Shoals. Take more impact in Stride. New Stride Guard insoles. Inside an ancient alien artifact, Earth's final stand is about to begin. What is this? A new enemy arises. We have unleashed the final conflict. And a hero emerges. You know, like the other humans. Yeah, I get that a lot. In the season premiere. This is our world, human. Not yours. Of Earth Final Conflict. Sunday at 9 Eastern on WGN. Julian Tavares, a date with history, six outs to get for a no hit bid and who would have thought that this sinking line drive in the first inning might have been one of the two or three tough chances the Cubs would have to handle Roosevelt Brown retired Jack Wilson Ricky Gutierrez has made a couple of good plays Chad Myers won as well at second base and Tavares has been wildly effective he has eight strikeouts two walks two hit batsmen and Pittsburgh has not scored a base hit yet. Mendy Lopez in to play third base and Josias Manzanillo is on to pitch. He's the fourth pirate hurler of the afternoon. Michael Tucker looks at a ball. Manzanillo, one of those guys, Joe, that if he's on your team and pitching well, you love him. But you hate him if you got to face him because he will. You say he's, he's, a you little, he's a little bit flamboyant. Well, yeah. One Ex way of putting excitement. It. Not laid back, not lackadaisical. A lot of emotion out there. Uh -oh. Swing and a rocket hit to right center field. Nobody's getting that ball. It's off the base of the wall. Tucker's thinking three. Around second he comes, and he's going to make it. Michael Tucker comes in and rips his eighth triple of the season. And this was a ringing shot into the base of the Ivy here. Fastball out of the player, out of the plate in the full arm extension. Driving the ball and it stays right there. And Michael Tucker putting that head down, picking them up and putting them down. He slides safely in the third base. Bill Brown with the infield plan in. Hitters love situations like this. Come on. 
One ball, no strikes to Roosevelt Brown is looking for his fourth run batted into the day. Pirates bring the infield in to cut off that all important seventh run trailing without a hit in this seventh inning. One thing you want to do as a hitter when you have the infield plan in, the pitcher would normally try to come inside to you because he don't want the arms to get extended. He wants that ground ball and hopefully not very hard. But you look for something out of the plate. If you get it, you got to drive it to the opposite field. Popped up out of play one and two. Michael Tucker, man, is there a guy in baseball that takes longer strides around the base pass than this guy? Devon White. Yeah, that's there's <laughs> another good name. You're right. Driven into left field, that might be deep enough. Giles the catch, Tucker the tag. He will score. Close play, but give Brown a sack fly and four RBIs today. It's the Cubs leading 7 0. Well, you cannot teach speed, and it's something that you have to have to be effective. And Lord McClendon wants to appeal third base, thinking Michael Tucker left early. Michael Tucker did not leave early with the play right there in front of him. I think the Cubs have had a couple of appeals against them in this homestand. So Manzanillo has to come to the stretch, step off the rubber, and then throw over to third base. And apparently, C.B. Buckner disagrees with Lloyd McClendon. So the run is good. That's the last appeal of the inning for the Pirates. And Ricky Gutierrez is in the box, two for three on the day. An infield hit and a conventional hit for the Cubs shortstop. For those of you not familiar with the rules of baseball, a runner can't tag up on any ball hit in the air and advance, but they cannot leave the base until after the ball has been caught by the defensive team. Smash to the shortstop. And the throw to first is in plenty of time to retire Ricky for out. Number two. And if, in fact, the base runner leaves moments before that ball is caught, the team can't appeal that tag play. And if, in the umpire's discretion, the runner left before the ball is caught, the runner can be called out. And if, in the case of the Cubs here scoring a run, that run can be taken off the scoreboard. But that clearly was not the case. And the umpiring crew got the call. Right, here's Todd Hundley 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score today. And Chip, to take it one step further, because the situation always comes up when the outfielder touches the ball, maybe bobbles it. It's Hundley, ground ball, 4 3. Cubs are still leading. Julian still has it going. Perfect timing. An old enemy returns. I am destined to be ruler of the world. A new spirit warrior appears. Your destiny awaits you. And secrets are revealed. It's about dark mysteries and deep magic. That will change the world. You can still have what you want. Fight for it. Mark Singer. I have much to show you. The season premiere. Beastmaster. Sunday at 12 Eastern on WGN. Some might see it as a pile of rocks, but it's really a small Sweetie, why don't you go get a drink? Okay. Good idea. <laughs> why settle for an ordinary beer when you can have the smooth, satisfying taste of Michelob Light? It's so organic. It makes me feel so insignificant. Tell it, me about Man with Michelob Light. Beer from Michelob Light. Oh, there you are. Ma'am, please don't touch the art. Nice collection, Terry. Nice reminder, too, Howie. Of? Of the Sprint store at Radio Shack. You're two minutes slow. Actually, I'm thousands of minutes ahead. Get 3,000 Sprint PCS minutes a month only at Radio Shack for just $29.99 a month for six months. Plus, save up to $75 in mail-in rebates. But these clocks are still off. Well, somebody should reset them. While somebody else? Makes a few phone calls. Only at the Sprint store at Radio Shack. Oh. 
Welcome to the show, MLB 2002. Rated E for everyone. MLB 2002. There's your Julian Tavares line score on the day. Cubs in front by seven. And in the eighth inning, Pirates are going to bring Craig Wilson, Gary Matthews Jr., and Jack Wilson to the plate. Wilson, one of the best pinch hitters in baseball history. Seven pinch hit home runs this season. That has tied a major league record. And against the Cubs, Wilson, 10 hits and 18 tries, a 556 batting average. Uh, you, you think, what would this guy do if he played every day? I mean, he, he tied the record that was held by Dave Hansen, the Dodgers. But this young man, you're talking about a phenomenal guy coming off the bench. And he owns the Cubs. I say just go ahead and walk it. Might not be a bad idea, but he's up there hacking. No balls and a strike. Another man for this Pittsburgh team. The Pirates have to find a place for him yes. to play. He's the a catcher by yeah, he's a catcher by trade, but he's not going to catch with Jason Kendall wearing the Pirate uniform. He can play right field adequately. I mean, he'll hit more than he'll let in, but that's probably the best praise you can give him defensively out there or first base, but with Kevin Young there with a big contract remaining. Right now Wilson a man without a position but there is nothing wrong with his bat and that's probably that's why the Buckles will be reluctant to let him go two and two Boy, that pitch all day long he's thrown that thing into a Pepsi Cola can Boy, he has hit his spot time and time again today and it's been it's been the inside corner and the ball moves in off the plate and the hitter has no chance right there. That one just missed. Three balls, two strikes. Tavares wanted that pitch, did not get it. Well, he had that movement to the first hitter he faced, and Gary Matthews Jr. And he's got it right now to pitch hitter Craig Wilson. We'll do it again. Full count. Mark Brady telling us this is the same Pirate team that batted around against the Cubs three times in the first three innings last week in Pittsburgh. That's the start Jason Beret would love to forget and the Pirates looking to end the season just like the Cubs. Wilson walks. I said let's walk him. Well, you're not going to just lay one in there not with a big lead. And now you bring up Matthews a tough man to double up. He can really run. And if you give this guy anything. In the strike zone and straight you're going to have a problem because he can hit a fastball. Well straight is not going to be a problem for Julian Tavares with the movement he has as Sandy Alomar picking up the phone and a call from the brass to get someone up and ready. One ball no strikes to Matthews. Wilson's at first. Pirates still without a hit. We're in the eighth inning. On Mayhay and Scott Chasen begins to loosen up. Here, Julian starting to miss pretty consistently outside. The mind is willing. The arm appears to be about at the end of the line here this afternoon. He's thrown a marvelous game. Well, right now he's thrown on purely adrenaline. And if he didn't have the no no going right now, he would probably be out. He's going to come close to the verge of doing that right now as Ricky Gutierrez comes in and has a few words. On pitch number 115, so Julian laboring. Good hitters count. Don't lay one in. Three balls, no strikes. Four straight bad ones, and Matthews is aboard. That's four walks for Tavares. And here's Jack Wilson, and Don Baylor, I think, is going to go and ask Julian how much he has left. Now, when Don jogs out, that's usually a sign that 
He's not ready to take him out. You know Baylor wants to give Julian every chance he can to make baseball history today. But if he's out of gas he's out of gas. He's going to let him go. He's got a seven run lead. If this were a two or three nothing game it'd be a different story. But Chip there's not there's probably not a pitch in the world that had would have a seven run lead and get to the top of the eighth inning and, and probably tell the manager yeah I'm out of gas. You know he'll wait to give the hit and then says then they'll say yeah I was out of gas but I wasn't going to say it to come out of the ball game. And Julian Tavar is doing what any pitcher would do in this situation. Here's Jack Wilson right down the middle strike one to Wilson He's 0 for 2 reached on an error by Michael Tucker in the sixth but Julian still hit 90 miles per hour on that good fastball about the only thing we haven't seen in this game is a triple play how about a five to four to three triple play the corner outside one ball one strike to Wilson by well, the way Julian's been throwing that sinking fastball inside on the hands of all the right handed hitters that could happen Lionel the shields playing even with the bag at third base one one pitch breaking ball did he go he went around oh how about that call. Ryan Arungi says it's strike two and that dramatically changes the at bat for Wilson. Well a good slider here and Wilson can't hold up or does he no says Brian Runge the first base umpire as Runge rings him up. Two on nobody out in the eighth inning comes with a big lead. Bullpen busy for the Cubs down the left field line. One two pitch fouled off his body at the plate. Boy, the Pirates are just not getting any kind of good swings whatsoever of Julian Tavares. They are worn at home plate area out as far as the ground balls. One two pitch strike three outside corner nine strikeouts for the man they call yo yo and that one was straight as a string one away well, Chip, this is a good call here by Mike Raleigh a lot of times when a pitcher sets up on the inside part of the plate like Todd Huntley does and the balls on the outside corner even though it's a strike. A lot of times the umpire would not give him that pitch because it forced them to move from one side of the plate to the other. But right there, Mike Riley giving a good call because the ball was still over the plate. Double play off the bat of Brian Giles gets you out of the eighth inning. Giles 0 for 3. He has yet to hit it out of the infield. One down in the Pirate eighth. Julian gets through this inning with no hits and he is not going to come out tonight. No chance. Giles is hitting a 10 double plays this year. And with all the ground ball outs Julian has gotten today, that'd be just what the doctor ordered. Got 10 whole, ground ball outs. You've got the whole offseason to rest. Two balls, no strikes. Caught the corner. Two and one. Giles wasn't too sure. Crowd trying to urge Tavares on here. Mendy Lopez waiting on deck. The 2 1 pitch. All three outside. Three and one. 125 pitches from Tavares. He's needed them all. It's In a very well pitched game. 3 1. The bases are loaded for the Pirates. That's five walks for Tavares. And he wants to pitch until the right arm comes off. 
Bases loaded for Mendy Lopez now with one out. Mendy Lopez came in the seventh inning as he pinch ran for Ramos Ramirez, who was hit in the left leg by Julian Tavares' fastball, but. Right now Julian looking to keep that no hitter alive and get a ground ball double play and with the pitch count above 125. Hey the squirrels trying to steal third. And into the cup dugout. Hey wait a minute. And he's found safe haven for the moment now which courageous soul is going to go over there and corral that road. Base is loaded for Lopez. I like it because he did touch third base too. That's true. Right through the heart of the plate. Strike one. Things are squirrely at the moment. <laughs> and tomorrow's still bright eyed and bushy tailed. He's got a no hitter in the eighth. Pirates have loaded him up on three walks. Julian, a career high nine strikeouts. And the 0 1 pitch to Lopez. Warren Morris waiting on deck. The Cup bullpen has Ron Mayhay up. And Scott Chasen was up earlier. Over through that ball, two balls and a strike. Now there have been no hitters thrown where runs have been scored against the pitcher who toiled and twirled the no hit bid. In fact, there have been no hitters that have been thrown and lost. Andy Hawkins comes to mind. Julian has a big lead here. The 2 on. 2 and 2. Hit. One run scores. Matthews around third. They'll wave him. He'll make it standing up, and the Pirates spoil the no hit bid. But what a game by Julian Tavares. He goes seven innings and one third before faltering in the eighth inning. And Don Baylor will let him get a big standing ovation. He'll go get the right hander. Now you go after the win. And Julian's bid for the first no hitter. With the Cubs since 1972. Goes unrewarded today, but Joe, what a start for a man that has pitched a career high in innings this year. Well, Julian Tavares, the last two innings, he was just going on sure guts and adrenaline. And why not? Fan gets him a sending ovation, a great job. He had great movement, hit the inside part of the plate. And if you think back to Julian's last seven appearances, he won a total of 12 and a third of an innings. So you can see what he's been at. But a great job by Julian Tavares. So it was Mendy Lopez who came on after Ramirez got hit by the pitch. Floyd McClendon made the move and it pays off. But the Pirates still trail by five. The man that she married molested me, went to jail, and she said it was my fault. Are you serious? Compelling. I don't trust this man at all. Vincent has cheated on me not once, but twice. You know, this season, real life changing television. You can get help now, or I'm out of here. The show where real people must make the real life choice to talk it out or walk away. Hosted by Michael Baston. Talk or walk. Weekdays at 11 Eastern on WGN Superstation. Hey Kelly, it's Steve. Couldn't get the concert tickets. You don't mind hanging backstage with the band, do you? See you tonight. Hey Kelly, it's Gary. Looking forward to tonight. How do you like Italian? Hey Kelly, it's Jack. I got those movie tickets. I can't wait to see you this evening. Hey Kelly, it's Mike. You, me, lobsters tonight. Looking forward to it. See? 
I told you if you moved it to New York, things would change. Change of heart. Weekdays at 3 Eastern on WGN Superstation. Job well done. Don Baylor with a pat on the back of Julian Tavares. Seven innings and one third of no hit baseball. And he's in line to win his 10th game of the year. Pats on the back all around from the pitching staff of the Cubs. This team's great strength all year. Now you got to concentrate on winning the game. And Ron Mayhe is on to face Morris, then Young. 7 2, two men on, one man out. Cubs leading late here at home. But Julia and Kevin are talking about the pitch that Mindy Lopez got for the base hit, but it was a pitch that Julian had been throwing all night long. That one lined and caught by Tucker, and Mayhe oh, covers the bag. How about that double play? Whoa! Great way to end the eighth inning. Diving stop by Tucker. And give Mayhe a gold star. Covers the bag like you're taught. And Lopez is toast in the eighth. WGN Superstation. Trust me. All the comedy. All the action. All the drama. America's Superstation. Who's a shark? Bringing you the movies you'll always remember. I can still feel you. And the moments you'll never forget. Let's keep going. WGN Superstation. Yippee Your Superstation. The movies you love. Holy cow. The movies you want. This is just the beginning. WGN Superstation. Gentlemen, if you keep dogging it, we're gonna run all night. Now let's go. Come on, let's go, let's move, move, move! That's better. That's looking. What if stopping was as hard for you? Just run it off, run it off! Come on, show me some hustle. As it is for your car. That's okay. Treat your car right with Ray Best's Quiet Stop Brakes, new at Pet Boys. Keep your wheels clean and save up to $40 on these ultra quiet, low dusting brakes. Oh, it's gonna be a long season. All you need to know is where to go. Pet Boys. Boy, great presence of mind by Ron Mayhay on this inning ending double play. Well, you don't see this too often in baseball, but a line shot and Michael Tucker with a great play. And Ron Mayhay coming all the way from the pitcher's mound, covering the base, beats Mindy Lopez. And a great job. The line drive seven, a three to one double play. And the highlight of the day for the Pirates offensively, Mendy Lopez. Ball didn't get in quite enough, but you can see the movement. Lopez made solid contact, clean single through the left side. That scored Craig Wilson and Gary Matthews. And those are the only two runs that Julian Tavares allows on the day. He's going to win his 10th game of the year as Pittsburgh only one skinny hit. Scott Sauerbeck now on to pitch the eighth for the Pirates. But Julian was just going on, on sure guts and determination at last inning. And he can't, he won't have to second guess himself because usually when you lose a no hitter, you say, why did I throw this pitch or that pitch? It wasn't a slider. It wasn't something outside. It was a sinking fastball inside where he had been getting the hitter out, hitters out all day long. Lopez bobbles at third, throws wide at first. Young kept the tippy toe on the bag. Good play by the Pirate first baseman whose defensive play had been a problem for him in seasons past. Not so this year. He's played real well over there. Well, Kevin Young has been one of those guys who love to stretch and stay on the bag here. And Lopez makes a throw wide, and you can see that right foot of Kevin Young still on the bag. That's why it helps to be at least 6'2, 6'3 over there. Bill Miller hits for Mayhay here in the 
Comes eighth. A little pop foul and out of play for a strike. Cubs bullpen will try to help Julian Tavares complete the Cubs' third one hitter of the year. John Lieber and Kerry Wood have one. Julian Tavares, Ron Mayhay, and it appears Jeff Facero will go for the third. One ball, one yep. strike. Just one ball. One and two. Once again, our heartfelt congratulations to Cal Ripken Jr. He'll play his final game tonight with the Baltimore Orioles. What a career, what a player. And what an asset to the game of baseball. This Cal Ripken Jr., he's going to open up a baseball academy in Aberdeen, Maryland, with a large youth stadium, several replica stadiums Fenway Park, Wrigley Field, the Polo Grounds, Ebbets Field, I think for the youth of America and the world really to come to Maryland and learn how to play baseball. Another example of Cal giving something back to the game that's given him and his entire family so much. Of course his late father managed the Orioles coached them for many years. His brother Billy was a teammate of his and Miller smokes a single into center field for a one out hit Miller swinging a hot bat in the late season. And before the top of the order comes up for the Cubs, we'll step aside and tell you what's coming up on WGN. They are the next generation of human evolution, and their fight to save mankind is about to begin. The series premiere of Mutant X, Sunday at 7 Eastern on WGN Superstation. Doubleheader day of baseball here on WGN this Saturday afternoon and evening. When we're done here at Wrigley, we'll send it off to Hawk Harrelson and Darren Jackson for the White Sox telecast from the Metrodome in Minneapolis later on this evening. White Sox had a fine second half of the year. We wish Hawk and DJ the best in their final two telecasts. No balls and a strike two to Shields right down the middle. Nothing and two. Tomorrow is the season finale for the Cubs on WGN. Juan Cruz against Jimmy Anderson. Joe and I will have it for you beginning at 1 o'clock here from Wrigley tomorrow. Lined into left field. Base hit by the Shields. Two hit day for Delino. Not sure how this guy factors into the Cubs' plans for 2002, but still a young man. You've got to figure he has a lot of baseball left. It's a matter, I think, of how much is that fire still burning and whether he at this point in his career is able to be an everyday player. Well that's going to be left entirely really up to Delino what he wants to make out of himself. End up getting put on waivers by the Baltimore Orioles picked up by the Cubs and what we have seen this year he has played some pretty good baseball and especially at the offensive end when he hits the ball stays on the ball and drives it in the left field. When he gets in trouble, when he tries to pull the ball and become a power hitter, which he is not, hit the ball to left field, take the bases over there. It's a lot of hits left over there. And we all know DeShields can still run. He's stolen 12 bases and 13 tries. I think defensively, there is a, a big question mark about Delano, who's never been known as one of the game's great infield gloves. The same thing was said once of Eric Young, too, and with a lot of hard work with Gene Glenn and Don Baylor, Eric Young has made himself into a very respectable defensive second baseman and there's no telling what that man and Gene Glenn could do with Delano to Shields over the course of a full spring training and a full season. So second base certainly one of the unanswered questions for the Cubs same at shortstop same in left field. As that one ripped foul past Billy Williams. You know, by Corey Patterson you know Chip as you, you talk about Eric Young and what I see in Eric I see a guy with a great personality who has a love for the game and a flair for the game and is able to pick his teammates up with his attitude. Now baseball is a game that is physical but it's a lot more mental and the mental part could overtake the physical part and what I say to Lino is that 
doesn't quite have the presence that a, that an EY has as far as being able to pick, help pick his teammates up by his attitude, by being positive. And that's the thing that a captain, a leadoff hitter should have. And that's what EY has brought to this ball club this year. And that's why one of the reasons the Cubs have been successful because all the guys have come together. Three and two to Patterson with runners at first and second. And I don't think you're trying to say that Delano Shields is not as positive a person as Eric Young. I just think you're saying that they're two very different from players with their outward. Right, exactly, from the outward expression. Right. Three and two, the count. Lined up the middle and into center field for a hit. Everybody had to hold up to see if that ball was caught. So Bill Miller stops at third base, and there's no place to put Sammy Sosa, who's coming up once again at Wrigley Field. Oh, what a great afternoon for baseball. Julian Tavares goes seven and one third of innings of no hit ball. Three home runs by the Cubs. Sammy with the inside the park home run. And now Corey Patterson blows them up with a single up the middle. And you've got Sammy with the bases loaded in the bottom of the eighth. And a reminder for you our senior producer director today is Arnie Harris. Cubs baseball produced by Pete Toma. Mark Brady's our associate producer. And the executive producer of WGN Sports is Bob Vorwall. Bases full for Sosa. Sammy's been on base three times. He's driven in one. He scored two, including an inside the park home run, his 63rd of the year. You know, 160 RBIs would be a nice round number, wouldn't it? That would be a great round number. If he hits it into the bleachers or beyond, that's exactly what he'd have. 13 Cub hits, only one for the Pirates. You know, if Sammy goes deep here, Barry may have to play tomorrow just to secure that home run title. Let's see, Sosa with 156 RBIs. He's 11 ahead of Todd Helton. Colorado scored only four today. Don't know if Helton drove in any, but <laughs> Unless they have a huge game tomorrow, the RBI champion is going to be Sammy Sosa in the National League. Sosa's also scored 144 runs. He's the runs champion. And that is the big thing. So who's, you know, for a club that your second guy has 90 less RBIs than the leader, someone is still doing a good job, and that's been Ricky Gutierrez of driving Sammy in. Nowhere near. 3 and 0, oh, and I'll bet you the Pirates are saying, look, if you have to walk him, but don't let him hit a grand slam. Give him one if that's what he earns. Well, I think 3 and 0. Oh, anything close to the plate. You better button down the hatches because Sammy will be swinging. Swing, belt it! <laughs> Matthews on the run! At the track! It is off the wall! One run scores around second to Shields. Patterson will stop. It's a double for Sosa. He missed a grand slam by two feet. Oh, baby. Oh, so close. Scott Sauerbach, 3 and 0, oh, comes in, and Sammy stays on the pitch. Fastball out over the plate. And Sammy hops a little bit, thinking he's got it. The fans are going wild. But Wrigley Field holds it. 158 RBIs for Sosa ties his career high. And ball one to Tucker. Cubs routing the Pirates 9-2. to two. Cubs have scored in every inning but the second, fourth, and fifth today. And now Lloyd McClendon is out for a visit with Sauerbeck. Four straight Cub hits in the eighth inning. And as this meeting on the mound gets going, we'll show you our Budweiser play of the game. Sammy Sosa, an inside the park home run. A ball that everybody in the ballpark thought was foul, including Rob McCobiak. But surprise, surprise, it stayed fair. And Sosa circled the bases. And scored easily on an inside the park home run. And the Cubs have not looked back today. 
the Cubs have come out with the big bats. They have jumped all the Pittsburgh Pirates. To the tune of nine runs. Three RBIs from Sammy Sosa, a home run. Back to back home runs by Sosa McGriff. Roosevelt Brown with a three run homer in the first inning to jump start this offense. Michael Tucker, the way he's playing first base, well, he may have found himself another position to be a little bit more versatile. Well, he ain't going to play there every day. That was Fred <laughs> McGriff at first base. But uh, Tucker still has a couple of years left on his contract. And being traded in the middle of a multi year deal. I think Tucker has the option of becoming a free agent if he so desires. If he does, he forfeits the remaining money. Base hit in the right field, scores Patterson, Sosa stops at third. Michael Tucker, a big day at the plate. 10 to 2, five straight hits. And Sauerbeck not getting lefties out, not getting righties out. And that's not good news. Well, Michael, left hand. Michael Tucker with a very good day on the afternoon and one of the good jobs by Andy McPhail and picking up the Cincinnati Red center fielder at a time when the Cubs desperately needed some hitting and he has provided a spark throughout the years since he has been here. Tell you what you love the enthusiasm you love the bat speed that he has and plus the idea that he knows the National League and I cannot foresee him requesting a a trade in the middle of a multi year contract, especially with the uncertainty of what's going to happen next year in baseball. But with him playing first base, it gives Don Baylor another option and Andy McPhail as to who they may bring back, who they may not bring back. Two strikes to Roosevelt Brown. Some guys from the University of Georgia right there, huh? We can't spell that good. Nothing in two. But we know how to count to 26, don't we? Yeah. Nothing in two to Brown. Swing and a high fly driven deep to right. Makoviak back. Track. Wall. Gone. Three run homer Brown. Oh my, oh my. Rope He's driven in seven today. Roosevelt Brown with two three run homers, a sacrifice fly. And he is making a name for himself. Said, don't forget about me next year. And Lloyd McClendon can just sit and watch as Scott Sauerbach has been ripped. Seven RBIs on the day, two home runs. What a great day in the breaking ball. Out over the plate, and he kept that front shoulder in. And he kapaya. I like the Cubs' chances today. Seven RBIs for Brown. Two three run homers. And Scott Sauerbeck has been awful. Ground ball to second, and that one through Warren Morris. You're seeing a complete pirate collapse here in the eighth inning. Their mind is not on baseball. And the agony will continue as Ricky reaches on an embarrassing error at second base. Well, the floodgates have opened up. As Warren Morris, and it rains, it pours, and this ball just stayed down right through the wickets. And the Cubs have exploded. 13 runs, seven RBIs from Roosevelt Brown. We've seen about everything this afternoon. And Lloyd McClendon has seen enough, and rightfully so. Sauerbeck was absolutely atrocious. He gave up six straight hits, and Gutierrez reaches on the air, and he will depart after surrendering six runs. In this Cubs eighth inning, Mike Lincoln will come on to pitch. 13 2 Cubs enjoying a cloudy day at Wrigley. 
Cosby presents The Formula for Fun. Step one, watch The Cosby Show. You better wake up because if you make a mistake in there, you could drown. <laughs> Step two, laugh. <laughs> Step three, repeat. <laughs> the more you watch, the more you laugh. And the more you laugh, the happier you'll be. Get excited, my boy. Come on. Excited? Excited. Say you're excited. The Cosby Show. Weekdays at 4.30 Eastern on WGN Superstation. Life is like a sport, and your feet take the impact hard. But new Stride Guard insoles absorb 50% more heel impact than these Dr. Shoals. Take more impact in stride. New Stride Guard insoles. I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger, and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. Nice collection, Terry. Nice reminder, too, Howie. Of? Of the Sprint store at Radio Shack. You're two minutes slow. Actually, I'm thousands of minutes ahead. Get 3,000 Sprint PCS minutes a month only at Radio Shack for just $29.99 a month for six months. Plus, save up to $75 in mail-in rebates. But these clocks are still off. Well, somebody should reset them. While somebody else? Makes a few phone calls. Only at the Sprint store at Radio Shack. Todd Huntley greets Mike Lincoln and drives the first pitch deep to right field for out number two in the eighth inning. And uh, let's see, it's Chad Myers who hits for the second time in the frame. Don't forget, friends, those of you tuning in to watch the White Sox, they'll be following us immediately after the Cubs take care of the Pirates. Hawk Harrelson, Darren Jackson standing by at the Metrodome for game two of that series with the Twins. Twins had a good year this year. So did the White Sox. Disappointing for the White Sox after last year's great season, but still for Jerry Manuel's team to rally the way they did and finish with a chance to go eight games over 500. Very good job by that staff, by those players, and by that organization. They're good people over there. Well, the one thing you want to see is when you're down and out, how much fight you have left and with Jerry Man Jerry Manuel not letting those White Sox die down they came back and showed some of the same type of ball they played last year by winning the division and also the Minnesota Twins Tom Kelly and the job they have done this year and I, I think that ball club really lost it when they traded Matt Lawton. I think that was the one thing that really took them down a notch because you took the heart and soul out of that ball club he was traded to the to the Mets. Here's the story today. The Pittsburgh Pirates got their first base hit with one out in the eighth inning today. Comes with three in the first, two in the third, one in the sixth, one in the seventh, and six for good measure so far here in the eighth inning as Scott Sauerbeck gave up six runs in one third of an inning. That will obliterate your earned run average. Myers skies to center. Gary Matthews Jr. puts the squeeze on it. And it's last chance time for the Pirates. Cubs on their way, leading big, 13 to 2. 15 million people in America have type 2 diabetes. And my own grandmother lost her battle. If you have type 2 diabetes, it's more important than ever to watch what you eat and exercise regularly. And if that's not enough, ask your doctor about adding Avandia to your daily routine. Avandia is different from some diabetes medications. It helps your body use the natural insulin it's already making to help lower your blood sugar. With the addition of Avandia, a lot of people have been able to lower their blood sugar. Avandia in combination with insulin may increase the risk of serious heart problems. Because of this, talk to your doctor before using Avandia and insulin together. Avandia may cause fluid retention or swelling, which could lead to or worsen heart failure. Avandia is not for everyone. If you have severe heart failure or active liver disease, Avandia is not recommended. Some people may experience weight gain with Avandia. Premenopausal women may be at increased risk of pregnancy. 
To check for serious liver problems, blood tests should be conducted before and during Avandia therapy. Diet, exercise, and ask your doctor about adding Avandia. You can be stronger than diabetes. Now, I know you're engaged, but in our house, it's our rules. Good night. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Daddy. Why settle for an ordinary beer when you can have the smooth, satisfying taste of Michelob Light? Scoot over. Ah. <clears throat> Here. Such a nice boy. <laughs> so what'll it be? Beer or Michelob Light? <laughs> I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. Life is like a sport. The impact of each step impacts more than just your feet. But new Stride Guard insoles absorb 50% more heel impact than these Dr. Shoals. Take more impact in Stride. New Stride Guard insoles. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Michelob Light for a smooth, satisfying taste you won't find in an ordinary light beer. Beer or Michelob Light. Illinois Lottery, where players have more fun. Pepsi, the joy of Pepsi. Jeff Facero's on for the 82nd time this year out of the Cub bullpen. That far and away the most appearances by a Cub Southpaw. In a single season in franchise history. And the first man that greets him is Kevin Young. And he pops it out of play. 13 to 2. The Cubs are on their way to handing their Pirates uh, 100th loss of the season. Pittsburgh's won just five of their last 21 games on the road. It's been a rough year for Lloyd McClendon. And today, Julian Tavares overmatched them. Allowing only one base hit with the help of Mayhay and now Jeff Facero. Well, Lloyd McClendon really hasn't changed, ex changed expressions the whole game. And the one thing about being a manager is staying cool under certain situations. I think Lloyd has had, a, had pretty good practice this year with all the adversity the Pirates have been through. One ball, two strikes. Broken bat. And into center field. Changes defensively for the Cubs. Roosevelt Brown's in right. Delano to Shields moves over to second base, and Aki Ojeda's in to play first. Chad Hermanson will hit from a Koviak. Kevin Young, one for four. That's the second Pittsburgh hit. Here's another young man the Pirates are high on. Chad Hermanson, he's a young player. They were hoping he'd have a breakthrough season in the minor leagues this year. Hasn't happened. But he still has a very high ceiling for the Pittsburgh team. But another right hand hitting outfielder, Joe, for a team that if you look at their ballpark, you figure they're going to try to stack up on some guys that can hit the ball from the left side. Well, that's exactly what they need because you want to build your your club the way your ballpark faces and left center field in PNC Park pretty deep out there but left field is about 314 320 down the right field line and that's where guys like Brian Giles loves to hit the ball but when you only got one legitimate left hand threat from that side you think the Pirates may be busy this offseason trying to go out there and spend some of the, the new money and bring in some more left handed power hitters. One more game to decide the championship of the National League Central. Cardinals with a one game lead over Houston. St. Louis was a 10 6 winner at Bush Stadium. Down on strikes, Hermanson won away in the ninth inning. Again, if Houston rallies to win tomorrow by virtue of a better win total than the Cardinals in their head to head matchup, Houston will be the champion of the Central, relegating St. Louis to the wild card. If, however, the Cardinals win, of course, they would have a two game lead, and Houston would be the wild card. And then all that would be left to be decided would be which team has the best record. 
And who plays the wild card? For right now, Arizona with a 92 and 68 record. Cardinals in Houston began the day with the same mark, 92 and 68, as well in our division. Here's Umberto Cota. He's 0 for 3. Line drive, right center field. Tough play for Patterson. Still going. Good jump. Graceful move. Two outs. Well, a good running catch by Corey Patterson showing the speed. It has made him one of the best prospects in all of baseball. Let's go to a line shot in the gap. Corey gets, gets, gets there with relatively ease out there. For those of you tuning in looking for the White Sox and the Twins, White Sox have nobody on and two out at the top of the first in the Metro Dome. We have one more break to get. We'll come back, wrap things up, and send it up to the Metro Dome if Keith Osick can oblige us here. Comes with a big lead, and that court foul and out of play. AL matchups all set. Yankees will play Oakland. Cleveland will play Seattle. The Mariners, by the way, are going for their 116th win today. That would match the all time record in baseball history held by the Cubs early in the 20th century. That would be remarkable. The scary thing for the Mariners is how do you top that? They come back next year and win 95 games. Everybody will say, what's wrong with them? Well, that's not what they're concerned about. The same thing in 98 when the Yankees won 114 ball games. Their season was not complete unless they won the World Series. And the Seattle Mariners, they've been the team all year long, already have the American League record, 115 wins. If they don't win the World Series, then people will say it just doesn't matter about the regular season. It's the postseason where you got to come through. Well, and that's when you have an organization that's come as far as Seattle has under Lou Pinella, where success is expected, like the Yankees, like the Indians, like the Atlanta Braves, like the Astros, like the Cardinals of late. You have the luxury of being able to say that, and until the Cubs put together some back-to-back -back winning seasons, it really isn't fair to expect a team to go from last place to the World Series year after year. But hopefully that's the direction the Cubs will be headed. As Osik drives it out of play to stay alive with two strikes, two outs in the top of the ninth inning. Juan Cruz, Jimmy Anderson tomorrow here on WGN. Joe and I will have the season finale beginning at 1 o'clock as we will reach the finish line. Game 162 tomorrow. Two, two. Driven in the air to center field. That's going to do it. Corey Patterson drifts back, and the Cubs hammer the Pirates 13 to 2. Cubs allow just two hits as Julian Tavares the winner, Tony McKnight the loser, and the Cubs have won number 88.